served. Warren Levinson reports on how some vets feel about the latest attacks by extremists in countries they once defended. Matthew Pilak, who was in the infantry in Iraq 10 years ago, says no one he knows who fought there is surprised by this turn of events. This was bound to happen. The Americans took the country's institutions apart and couldn't replace them, he said. Leaving sooner or staying longer wouldn't have changed that. We just set the pieces in motion, set everything up for this to happen, and we just left, and now we're watching the dominoes fall right where uh, they were set. Pilak says he doesn't think there'll be an Iraq in five years that it will split along ethnic lines. Warren Levinson, New York. The nation's labor secretary is calling on Congress to pass a higher minimum wage for all workers, not just federal contractors, who will see a pay increase next year. Jackie Quinn explains. Raising the minimum hourly wage past $7.25 an hour is becoming a reality for some 200,000 federal contract workers under a new rule announced by Labor Secretary Thomas Perez. No person who works a full-time job should have to live in poverty. He says it's good business sense. Raising the federal minimum wage to 1010 would lift 2 million people out of poverty and benefit more than 28 million people. Many business owners object to a higher minimum wage. Earlier this year, the Senate passed such a measure, but it stalled out in the House. Jackie Quinn, Washington. Republican turned Democrat Charlie Crist picked up important endorsements from gay rights groups yesterday in his bid to retake the governor's office in Florida. Tony Winton has more. Running as a Democrat, the endorsement from Equality Action Pack was celebrated with a news conference. The next governor of the state of Florida, Charlie Crist. A far cry from the Charlie Crist of eight years ago who ran against allowing gay marriage. His explanation for the change? I've made mistakes in the past and admitted it, uh, but uh, I know that I'm in a better place and I am who I am and I'm glad to be here today and I'm honored to get the endorsement. There was no comment from Republican Governor Rick Scott who supports the state's ban on same-sex marriages. Tony Winton, Miami Beach, Florida. A new report from the White House says the president is in excellent health. Jerry Butlander reports the president's annual checkup. The president had a physical last month, the first in two and a half years. His doctor says his overall health is excellent, that he makes healthy lifestyle choices, eats a healthy diet, and gets some exercise every day. Once a smoker, the president is now tobacco-free, though he occasionally chews some nicotine gum and drinks only occasionally and in moderation. Jerry Bodlander, Washington. Fruitland American Meat is recalling thousands of pounds of beef that could contain contaminated materials linked to mad cow disease. Federal officials reviewing slaughtering logs found that certain precautions had not been followed before the meat was shipped to Whole Foods stores in New England and a restaurant in New York. However, the federal government added the beef posed only a remote health hazard and the cows had shown no sign of the disease. A new study says teenagers are drinking less but texting more. Ed Donahue has the latest on teen behavior. For the most part, the news is good. We are seeing a pattern of more healthful behavior among young people. Dr. Stephanie Zaza at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says teens are cutting back on smoking, drinking, taking drugs, fighting, and having sex. A growing problem is screen time, playing video games, or texting. We see 41% of students reporting that if they drove in the last 30 days, 41% of them actually texted or drove. It texted and drove. Some researchers believe most of the screen time increase is due to the use of social media. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. The Surgeon General warns teens the cinnamon challenge is not for pussies. Taylor Swift is now dating the Watertown boat, and a middle-aged funeral director buys a flashy red hearse. We pity your pathetic dependence on this for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. This is The Onion Week in Review. A study released this week by the National Institutes of Health confirmed that for the 25th straight year, wolf attacks remain the leading cause of death in the United States. The Human Health Agency's findings confirmed that being viciously killed by a ravenous wolf claimed the lives of over 800 thousand Americans last year alone, with researchers adding that one person in the United States dies every 40 seconds from a violent wolf attack. The mortality rate associated with wolf attacks vastly outstrips the death tolls of cancer, stroke, and chronic respiratory disease. People should know that anyone... Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs>
This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. All right, so of course you can join us uh, again, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype. You can Skype on in at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. And it'll be easy for you to get in touch with us from that point forward. Once your request is approved, which it will be, just be patient. So, again, username lrn.fm. I last night teased a story um, that we never got to, so I want to make sure we do hit that up right out the gate here. But coming up, Daryl, you're going to be telling us 11 things that have been learned about libertarians from status. Yes. From, st- from people who love the government or believe... Uh, in the government. I want to get to that. That sounds fascinating. Of course, your call is welcome at 855-450 for you. Jumping into the story from Mashable.com about a young man at age 15 who has made $100,000 on Bitcoin. I saw this story earlier today, actually. When Eric Finman received $1,000 from his grandmother in 2012, he invested it in Bitcoin. The then obscure form of online currency. A year and a half later, he sold his investment for a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! And used the earnings to launch Botangle.com, an online tutoring service that runs on video chat. That's not bad for an entrepreneur who's only 15 years old. The business now has more than 20 staffers, including programmers, designers, and animators, and over 100 active users. Although the user base is relatively small, the company attracted much buzz after Finman participated in a Reddit Q&A offering tips for startups and answering questions about finding success with Bitcoin. He told Mashable, quote, Some people can't comprehend how a 15-year-old could do something like this. What a lot of people don't understand, young or old, is that you can create anything you want with no barrier to entry on the internet. Some people can't fathom how a 22-year-old college dropout started a billion-dollar company. Talking about Microsoft? Well, or there's Apple. Microsoft, <laughs> Apple, there's Facebook. Yeah. There's all kinds of companies, but you know, you've got all these 20-something-year-old college dropouts that become billionaires. So, how is it hard to fathom that a 15-year-old that made basically a lucky investment could wind up starting his own company. Are you sure that it's luck? I feel like he must have a really high IQ or something. Like he he knew what he was doing when he was investing in cryptocurrency because then there's like no barrier to entry like Ian said because it's completely anonymous and uh he just created something that was, you know, e- extremely popular which I think is, you know, great especially since he did it uh, using something that's well, so universally. No, that may not be extremely popular. It only has a hundred customers at the moment, but that's something. The reason I say it was a lucky investment is any time you make an investment that's based somewhat on speculation, then you know when it turns out in your favor a hundredfold. There's a little bit of luck involved in that. Absolutely. Yeah, you couldn't know. I mean, back in 2012, yeah, like Bitcoin the, seemed like a novelty to a lot of people. The people that bought Dell stock or Twitter stock or some of the other stocks on opening day of here's the first time this stock is available and they bought it and then the Scott the stock just skyrocketed. There's some luck involved in that. I mean, there is, there is that. luck involved, but I think if you're investing in something that is you know is stable and uh, well formulated as Bitcoin that you know it's it's a wise investment and it takes a bit of vision to see that it's going to you know give you a return in the future. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, if you invest with vision as opposed to just throwing something at a dartboard, you're probably going to do better. I mean, I I would right. hope. Uh, I mean, and certainly somebody uh, in the y- young male position or young teenage uh, position like this would probably have a better idea of how Bitcoin works than the average uh, middle-aged adult right out the gate. Right. And so they may have he may have been better able to see what the potential for Bitcoin was than the average person who might be presented with something like that. I mean, I remember what it was like for Mark and I, we did kind of have to get dra- uh, dragged into Bitcoin in the beginning. Back when we were introduced to it, it was 27 cents a piece and uh, you know, one of our first questions was, "Well, what's backing it?" 
You know, we couldn't understand that it wasn't like gold. It's not based on anything. Right. And well, it's based on something. It's based on ones and zeros sure. on computers that are doing hashing and something and the other thing and electricity, <laughs> Bitcoin. And it's based on cryptography as well. Uh, as That's well as the think, ones and zeros. Yeah, but I mean, it's ones and zeros in a very complicated <laughs> string. Let's just say that. So, um, yeah, I mean, even, and, and I'm relatively technically adept. I mean, I was just switching out a hard drive today in a computer. I mean, the average person can't do that. But even I was, it, it wasn't an immediate click for me when it was presented to me. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But it's not like gold. I so, like gold, you know, and now I finally see it. And I still like gold, by the way, and silver. I just also have a real appreciation for how great Bitcoin is and how it can be used in ways that gold and silver can can never be used. It's easily divisible. You can send it anywhere in the world. It's a decentralized currency. It can't be targeted and taken I've out. never sent a one one thousandth of a piece of silver electronically instantaneously yeah. to California. For that matter, I've never sent silver or gold anywhere in payment for anything. I've only purchased it. I mean, maybe you could, if you're in person, silver is a usable kind of thing if somebody's willing to accept it and if you have it in sort of cuts that are usable, you know, right. like an ounce or less or a quarter ounce or tenth of right. an ounce. Right. So now you can clearly see the value of Bitcoin. Like, it, last time I checked, it was somewhere around $600 a piece. But, yeah, that's about right. So when when it first started out, when you first became introduced to Bitcoin, uh, were you actually like fighting the idea, saying that you know, I just don't get why this is valuable? Like I I don't want to invest in this. I uh, I don't really recall f fighting it, um, but it's been a, a few years, and you know we had Gavin Andreessen, who was one of the he's one of the programmers of Bitcoin, lives in uh, Massachusetts. He came up and actually took Mark and I out to lunch. To kind of talk about this technology and i just remember our main you know sort of objections to it it seemed interesting like we were definitely interested in watching it and learning about it uh, but at the same time obviously i didn't see the vision and just go and buy a bunch of them at that point which sure would have been great had i done that but i didn't have the the vision there luckily we had advertisers who wanted to pay with bitcoin and so we started to take a portion of our ad dollars in bitcoin and that ended up being a pretty good move well, that was lucky. I mean, I guess now I'm playing into was the it argument that, that it was just luck that made Bitcoin popular. But I think it was more than that. I think uh, it's, you know, now it's easy to recognize that it's actually based on the standard of a good currency. Like it's something. Well, yeah, that, that, there's no luck involved in that. No, right? it's, like, it's anonymous. And um, the way potentially that it's anonymous. Potentially? True. By its default, yeah. Bitcoin isn't an anonymous platform because it's totally viewable by anyone who wants to look at it. They, it's basically the blockchain, the, the guts of Bitcoin is essentially a public ledger. And so anyone can go and look and see where money is in that ledger, where the Bitcoin is and who's holding it. And you can't know offhand who owns the address. So you can see where all the money goes. You can see, like, for instance, the money the feds took from the Silk Road raid. Right. Everybody knows where that is. They know exactly which account it's in, and they're going to know where it's distributed to as far as which accounts, but they don't know who owns the accounts unless somebody comes right out and says, this is mine. Right. Like, prove it. for example, you've got at least one Bitcoin wallet address posted publicly on the internet. I have That's right, one yeah. or two. I've got a couple, yeah. So, you know, people can look at those and see how much Bitcoin I have. They yeah. can see where it's been set. They don't necessarily know... Who owns all of the wallets that it's been sent to? Correct. So it it's not hard to use Bitcoin anonymously, but by its default, you know, it's an open system and anybody can can look into it. So this young man, he figured out that Bitcoin was awesome. He bought a thousand dollars worth of it in twenty twelve, turned it into a hundred thousand dollars, and gosh, I sure hope he didn't sell it all. I mean, it would be tragic. I understand that, like, he's probably built this business of his that we can talk more about his little success story here in moments. It's, uh, it's a great little story. And uh, I I'm sure that, or I would hope that he didn't sell his Bitcoin because if it continues to be adopted as it seems to be, like, Dish Network is going to take it, apparently, at the end of the year. Other yes. companies coming on board. It's likely only going to go up. Of course, it could go down to zero tomorrow. You never know. 855 450 free. Probably not, though. It's free talk live. Can education be separated from the state? 
Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At MathGate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Phone records, financial and location data, PRISM, Tempora, X-Keyscore, Boundless Informant. Hey, y'all, Scott Horton here for offnow.org. Now, here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now, they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betrayed their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place. In state after state, I've lost count, more than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something, something important, something that can work if we do the work. Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. And you can bring up whatever you want by dialing in toll-free here. We're telling a success story at age 15, $100,000 this young man made buying Bitcoin when he was, I think, around 13. We'll uh, continue his story here in moments. Speaking of Bitcoin, Antiwar.com accepts Bitcoin. And are you proud that the premier anti-war site on the Internet is run by libertarians? It's time that we do something about it because between some government fines levied against Antiwar.com a few years back, deaths of some major donors, along with those who panicked after the revelation 
that the FBI was monitoring antiwar.com, antiwars found themselves in a tight spot. They've cut staff over the past several years. They cut it in half, and that has spread the remaining staff very thin. Right now, the top folks there are foregoing their salaries. They're committed to keeping the website going. Are you? They need your donation. Go to antiwar.com. You can donate there, antiwar.com slash donate, as a matter of fact. And again, they do take Bitcoins. In fact, they prefer Bitcoin. They call it the peace currency, antiwar.com slash donate uh, to help them out to continue the uh, the excellent anti-war-related coverage they've been doing for quite a long time. So back to the story here. We've been talking about Bitcoin and off and on over the years here on Free Talk Live. It's just a fascinating topic that is uh, a world of its own. I mean, you can get as deep into Bitcoin as you want, like all technology. You know, you can go and learn the nitty-gritty of how mining it works and learn all the technical ins and outs of uh, a Bitcoin. Or you can just learn how to buy it and trade it and sell it or just hold it. And you know, Or if you're selling a product, you can learn how to integrate Bitcoin into your shopping carts and things like that. In fact, Daryl, you were telling me about something pretty exciting by the folks over at Coinbase which is one of the uh, the main providers of merchant services for you know people who have a product to sell, whether it's in real life or maybe on online. You sell products mostly online. Sometimes you'll appear in real life, like maybe at Porkfest or right. the Liberty Forum. But uh, you sell books online, and you just implemented this new tool that I thought was... I mean, we can get back to the story about the young man's business here in a moment. I just thought this was really neat. What is it that you can add... With? Now, you can set the prices individually for each item, and a lot of people will set the prices separately for if you're paying with Bitcoin, it's this much, mm -hmm. although some people have it where it's the same price, but you can give people discounts, and there's just like one or two clicks in the merchant service area of the website and so if you go to my website now, enter my Bitcoin store, you will actually see that everything has a 5% discount. If you pay with Bitcoin. Right. That's the only way they can buy directly from me. Oh, really? On my online store oh, is with Bitcoin. That. Okay. I thought you were still doing, did you, you never did uh, like PayPal or any of that? I used to. Oh, wow. So you've migrated Bitcoin only? Bitcoin only if they're buying directly from me. Okay, cool. So fpp.cc is where folks can yes. go to do that. But but what that would allow people to do is if they were taking both, if they were taking the U.S. Right. dollar and Bitcoin for products, you could offer a discounted rate for yes. Bitcoin buyers. And that, I think, is a really smart right. thing so to do. Because what I'm doing, I'm already giving free shipping, mm -hmm. discounted rates on most of the books, and now an additional 5% off. So go and check that out. That's Coinbase. The folks over at Coinbase yes. have set that up. Pretty cool uh, feature, and it'll be interesting to see what other kind of merchant features come up. So uh, back to the story at Mashable.com. He's 15 years old, and he has uh, made $100,000 in his Bitcoin. It's, he took an original $1,000 gift from his grandmother in 2012, bought Bitcoin with it, and apparently sold his investment, and I sure hope he didn't sell all of it. But he goes on to say this... Uh, Young gentleman has started a website called Bowtangle.com. His name is Eric Finman. He says some people can't comprehend how a 15-year-old could do something like this. What a lot of people don't understand is you can create anything you want with no barrier to entry on the internet, no matter how old uh, you are. And I think that one of the reasons why people don't understand this is because people have a certain idea about what teenagers are supposed to do, right? What right. children or teenagers are supposed to do. We, I remember we read a story about like a seven-year-old who started his own bow tie business. It didn't have anything to do with Bitcoin, but you know he started a million-dollar bow tie making business. And I think I think people have this idea that well, if you're a, under the age of eighteen, you have to be in school all day, and certainly if you're in school all day, you wouldn't have time to start your own business. Well, I mean, even if you're below the age of eighteen, you could be like you know fifteen, like this kid was, or even seven, like what you were just talking about. You can still decide, like, oh, I have an interest in this thing, so I'm going to figure out what I need to do to make it successful. And you know, people do that all the time. Like when I was younger, I had a lemonade stand. It was like I just decided one day that, you know, I, I thought it would be a good idea. So I spent the time and, and invested in it. And, you know, it turned out to be profitable. And it's not like how it many takes, days did you run it? 
uh, probably like two or three weeks oh, wow, during okay. the summer. And how quickly did the government come in and shut you down because you didn't have a permit? They did not, uh, actually. Lucky. No, I just, I lost interest after a while because I was so young. I was like, I have other things to do. Sure. But, I mean, the th- the point is that you can still, like, find something that you're interested in beyond what is expected of you. Like, you still have the capacity to create something in your own time. Like, whether it's just, like, a drawing that you make, like, that's that's more common for children is, like, you see them writing on the sidewalks with chalk or something. But, I mean, this kid just decided to spend his time in, in uh, like, investing in Bitcoin and uh, apparently he was extremely successful with that, like with the, the profit that he came out with. Yeah, and so he started his own website, Botangle, which launched in May, so it's pretty new. It's still in beta, by the way. Okay, allows users to video chat and learn about any subject from computer programming and dance lessons to art and French classes instructed from, say, someone in Paris. Lessons are specialized and one-on-one, so users can set up a schedule that works best for them. Finman, who's from rural Idaho and calls the schools in his region limited, came up with a concept after wanting access to more classes not offered nearby. I mean, isn't that interesting? He was so disappointed with the government schools selection, you know, in his area. He just came up with a way to get the classes to him. Like he invented a method of acquiring the information he was seeking. Pretty cool. That is brilliant. Like some kids would just turn to like reading in their spare time, but he actually created something that was useful to other people as well. He says, I read a, uh, a, it looks like a book called Without Their Permission How the 21st Century Will Be Made, Not Managed by Alexis Ohenian. And it taught me that I could do anything through the internet, he said. I wanted to use the beauty of the open and free web so people like myself can get access to a great learning experience, whether they're from rural Idaho, New York, or even Africa. But he said finding staffers who take both the business and himself seriously has presented a challenge. He says, whenever I interview a potential candidate for a job, I always ask if being a part of a team with a 15-year-old bothers them. Sometimes that's the end of the conversation right there. (laughs) And other times people lie. And that shows later on. It's pretty easy to tell when it happens, but the team I have now are super supportive and they don't treat me any differently than anyone else. Right. That's kind of strange that, you know, I mean, even though he is young, he's still out there being productive. Like he has uh, all of these things to back up his name. Some people don't want the uh, the boss to be younger than them, though. Like that oh, it's, it's an inferiority some, thing? Yeah, it's some kind of uh, slight against you because, you know, you're so old and you have to work for this 15-year-old. I mean, I would hope a lot of people don't feel that way, but it sounds like it's fairly common for him to feel discriminated against by the potential employees. 855 450 free. More on the trials and tribulations of starting a company at age 15. Coming up. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean, really get their attention... Then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies... Your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. 
DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial toll-free here to 855-450-FREE, whether you want to talk about young Bitcoin entrepreneurs, as we are at the moment, or whatever happens to be on your mind. It is up to you. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Hey, at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of some of the best coffee in the world. It's BuzzBox, shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. BuzzBox, it's great coffee, and it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. But at BuzzBox, they do something special that other coffee producers just aren't involved in. They have set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. And they're teaming up with World Vision that allows... Free Talk Live and listeners like you to come together to offer micro loans to people in very difficult parts of the world, uh, help people start their own businesses. You can do that. Every 10 listeners that signs up over at coffee.freetalklive.com finances one micro loan. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com, get your free pound. You do have to pay the cost of shipping, but the pound itself, no charge for that. You'll get an auto ship subscription. You can adjust the amount of time between when you get one shipment versus another. And uh, it's great coffee as well. So try it out for yourself. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We can talk more about the young man. He is 15 years old, made $100,000 at least in Bitcoin. And maybe he made more than that because he apparently is paying his uh, employees in Bitcoin. We'll talk more about how he's got his business operating here in a moment. But let's go first to Aaron in, I don't know where, Delaware, I think. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. <laughs> Hey, Ian. Uh, you had a good memory, but I just moved to Pennsylvania this oh, last week. All right. Well, welcome back. <laughs> Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, what I was thinking about is, uh, actually, while you were talking, is the um, the evolution of different things, how they continue to evolve over time, like money and the state and people. And uh, is like, do you, ever, do you ever think that perhaps people need to be as different as they are and we need maybe people who are aggressive by their nature to defend against 
uh, I guess, threats to humanity. Well, why would you need someone aggressive to defend something? That doesn't make much sense. But I do understand kind of what you're saying, that people are different, and it's great that people are different. I mean, we have contrast in the world as a result of people's differences, and because of people's differences, we can be selective about who we want to surround ourselves with. And Well, to me, it sounds like he's saying that there's a lot of people in the world that are just passive when it comes to conflict. Like, they don't want to get involved in the drama. So, like, in order to, like, stamp out the conflict, you kind of need somebody who has the audaciousness to stand up and say, like, hey, we're not going to take that. Uh, I was thinking more of people that were, like, wildly, like, violent people. Um, Like, the people who want to be soldiers and police officers at one time had a place fighting off lions and tigers and bears. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, there's there's value to having people who can defend uh, those who are unable to defend uh, oneself. I right, mean, but this- there's a major difference between being willing and able to defend yourself and being willing and able to go on the offensive sure. against something that possibly maybe in the future might maybe come into your area and maybe possibly do some harm. Yeah, I guess that's... Did you ever read Ender's Game? That's uh, evaluated in there where they the buggers come and attack the humans and then they go on the offensive and go back and take out their planet. So, I've never read the book, but I saw the movie. Okay, well, then you get the basic concept. It may be that just as your body has uh, certain things that go through and kill cells that have changed, you, there needs to be a organizational system at certain times where humanity needs to organize in order to fight off a larger threat. Mm-hmm. Is it what something is the... that's just a threat or is it something that's actually initiated violence initi- like in the beginning? What, what? So like in tribal society at one time, let's just use lions as a threat. There needed to be someone with the nature of the state, I guess, in order to organize people into a group to fight it off because no one could do it on their own. Well, that's not the nature of the state. I mean, the state is a monopoly on violence. I mean, if people come together on their own to fight off an onslaught of tigers or lions or other people, then that's that should be within their purview, and it's fully within their rights to defend themselves. The state is something that would conscript people, that would force people into uh, to battle against their will. And so that's, you know, the difference between the state versus people voluntarily defending themselves. I'm curious what larger threat you are alluding to. You keep mentioning we need to protect ourselves against a larger threat. What's the larger threat? (laughs) So in modern society, it's probably vestigial, but I can see at one time, let's see, I, I always, I look at the state as developing out of these tribes that defended themselves against larger threats. And eventually, I look at the state as developing out of man's desire to control man. I mean, that to me is where the state comes from. Right. But why do you think we have that desire? I have no idea. Not everyone has that desire. For instance, I do not have that desire. And I don't know about my two co-hosts here. But Well, uh, there are some people out there that have the idea that if uh, if you see a potential threat, then you have to organize a system where you can just take out the threats before they actually cause harm. But right. I mean, I I don't agree with that idea. Like, just because something seems threatening, that doesn't mean that there actually is going to be harm induced at some point. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I see that there's about ten percent of the population probably that's liberty oriented, and those tend to be, I think, throughout history, the explorers, the people that have pushed out away from the cities and colonized new areas. They're willing to rough it in order to be liberated from the controls of the system. But then there's also the people that then make these safe havens where humanity can, I guess, protect itself and be safe from uh, larger threats, I guess, and not... It sounds like you're romanticizing the uh, the libertarians. I mean, you know, there were people who were pushing out on the the boundaries as well to try to control people. I mean, just as, just as many likely people who were going out to try to be free... You know, I don't know. How, I don't know if it was as many, but there are certainly people who would go out into those new places and want to control others because, well, wherever they were, there were already people controlling others, and so it would be easier to control others in a new place where you can establish a foothold. So I think the you know that sort of that spirit of onward, let's push the the frontier, could also have existed in those who wished to control others. 
That's probably a good point. I, but do you see any value in people who want to organize and control others throughout history that may have explained why we developed that no, way? No, in the same way, I don't see value in a slave master. I mean, I, they, those were people who utilized humans as a resource, as, a, as something they could tap and utilize to maximize their profits or whatever it was that they were trying to accomplish in life. And it was morally wrong. And we know that it's morally wrong now. And even though we can look at the past and admit that it happened and you know begrudgingly accept that humans would do something like that to one another at, at a certain point in time, I don't see that there's any reason to show appreciation for it. Well, I don't agree with the initiation of force or like groups gathering up to like go out and uh, you know take over a certain plot of land or whatever. But you can look back through a historical context and see that like the adversity that was created because of those desires actually led to you know humans developing a better idea of what it is to be free and like how valuable that is and to not live in a violent society. If the forming of groups is completely voluntary, then that's one thing. But when somebody comes along and says, I am your king, and then you say, but I never wanted a king. It doesn't matter. It's for your I own am your good. king. <laughs> you must now give me stuff because I am your king. Right. Then this obviously that is immoral and wrong. Right. I, I mean, I guess I can see where you're coming from, Ellen, that, you know, we can appreciate if you want to try to appreciate tyranny that, yes, tyranny does spark f beliefs in freedom. It does spark interest in freedom. But then there's this argument that some people would make that, well, then maybe we should make the government larger so as to and make it more oppressive so as to encourage people to find the ideas of liberty. And I'm not willing to, to go that I know that people road. that voted for Barack Obama for, for that, that reason. reason. Thanks, Aaron, for your call tonight and for the discussion. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Nah, I don't appreciate aggression. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the Red Planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? You're 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. We've got more on the way about the Silk Road. We touched on it briefly earlier when talking about Bitcoin and still have more to say about the 15-year-old who started his own business online after making $100,000 at least on Bitcoin with a $1,000 investment two years ago. We'll continue his story. Also want to let you know about MyMagicMud.com. I have used it and have been blown away. I didn't it was hard for me to believe when Mark said that he had tried My Magic Mud and after one application had noticed that his teeth were whiter, and it really does work. Like, I was blown away. Like, that seems like a pretty amazing claim, right? It's real. MyMagicMud.com. It's a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria that can cause cavities. The product gives you a dentist clean every time you use it and is gentle on the enamel. The ingredients in My Magic Mud are also used as dietary supplements. So not only is it an effective whitener, it is safe to swallow. My Magic Mud is a teeth whitening powder. It strengthens your teeth and promotes healthy gums. It reverses sensitivity and soothes any pain that you might be dealing with. Created by Jessica Armand, she's a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. And she's going to be attending Pork Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We'll tell you more about that coming up. She'll be uh, selling her jars there, but you can, of course, go and order them right now at MyMagicMud.com. I think it would make an awesome gift. It's also awesome for you and your mouth. Uh, on the website, by the way, you can listen to an interview with biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole, where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. So go and check it out at MyMagicMud.com. As we go to your phone calls and thoughts, more about the Bitcoin entrepreneur at age 15 in a moment. First, Reggie in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hi, guys. Hey, Reggie, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to speak on the cop issue you guys were talking about on the Thursday show. Okay. I didn't feel like uh, I didn't feel like the, uh, the messaging was, was well um, spoken about, and I just wanted to speak about it. I think that um, our current system that we live under is basically a slavery system. Sure. And cops are, and cops are basically the gatekeepers of that slavery system. Cops are the taskmasters. To some extent. They're yeah. The, they're the guy with the uh, Yeah, and I see no difference between the cops and, and a gatekeeper of a slave plantation. And um, I really I really think that killing cops should not be people's um, first option, um, but I definitely don't see them as victims. And I felt like the, the messaging of the show yesterday almost made the cops seem like victims, almost seem like they were just innocent victims, and I I never look at cops as victims anymore. Well, now, hold on. Okay, so you're talking about the Vegas shooting that happened over the weekend, I think it was, where two yes. officers were shot while eating at a at a restaurant. And I'm going to put you on hold because we're getting some weird uh, talkback noise from your line. So two cops were, uh, were eating. They were shot to death right there in a CC's Pizza outside of Las Vegas. 
Um, there was also another in, uh, innocent person killed at a, at a Walmart later on. In a, right across the shootout. street. And uh, look, there were people who were saying online that these cops deserved it because no doubt they were out there destroying people's lives. And so therefore they deserved death. But one of the things that was pointed out in the uh, cop block piece that I thought was very good about this that we shared on the air is that there's no evidence that these two police officers had engaged in murder. There's no evidence whatsoever. So essentially, these the two killers took it on their own volition to go and ice a couple of uh, police officers because they had a badge, because they were wearing a uniform. Right. It's the whole guilt by association sort of thing. And that's, as uh, Pete Ayer pointed out from Cop Lock, that's the worst form of collectivism. Right, and there's really nothing that deserves the death penalty like that unless you are a murderer or if, or if you're like caught in the act. Right, and that is another thing. The immediacy of self-defense has to usually happen in right. the act. I mean, it's just people can change over time, and I want to give law enforcement officers an opportunity to come around and to, uh, to, to do better things with their lives and to stop hurting peaceful people. But, Reggie, I want to give you a chance to respond, so go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that um, stance at all. But I, I personally view a cop's uniform as almost like an enemy uniform just by nature. I really, really do. Um, and I'm, like I said, it's no different from if a slave's trying to break free from a slave plantation and you got um, somebody's watching a gate trying to keep you in there, keep you oppressed. Yeah, but unlike on, this um, one, they've got, other, uh, they've got other taskmasters right around the corner. You don't, you don't just get out of the plantation on this because the plantation's the whole country. Uh, so, you well, know, it's... Well, the plantations, the whole world. Well, there's different plantations around the world. Right, and cops are, are, I mean, I see what he's saying with the gatekeeper thing, though. They're the ones that bring the law to fruition. They're the ones that actually pound the hammer when it's time, you know, to enforce the law. So, like, they're the ones that actually, they actualize uh, the effects of, like, breaking the law. But I, I just don't see how they're guilty just by association. In the moment, if a police officer were attacking you with the intent to kill you, or at least what you believe to be the intent to kill you, I think you would be morally right to defend yourself with violence. However, it's a tactical mistake because then you will die because when even if you kill that officer, yep. there are more, many, many more who will come to take his place. You'll die. Your family will no longer have you around to uh, help take care of them and you know enjoy life together. And then beyond that, because you won't see the rest of the story, the rest of the story will be that the police and the government agencies will use you as the excuse to create new laws and new restrictions, making the plantation an even less free place in the future. Right, and they're the, since they're the ones that actualize the laws, like you should be going after the laws and not the people who enforce them. How many how many cops uh, will have to die before that um, method changes? You just think it will just continue to get worse? Yeah, I think it will continue to get worse. You will attract as the as the job becomes more dangerous. You will attract a more uh, tougher element of uh, possible employees, people with an axe to grind, people with revenge on their mind, even worse than what we have today. And it's it's bad now. We had a former officer a former trainer of police officers he wasn't himself a police officer but he he was one of the guys who trained the recruits basically and so he would see year after year each new batch of newbies coming into the business so to speak he told us confided in us that uh he's quitting he quite quit his job he has quit his job it's been a few years since we've seen him now and uh, he, the reason he quit was because he said only 10 or 15% of the people that were coming into these classes were people who he considered to be the right stuff for policing. The 90 to 85% of them he described as badge heavies. These are people who wanted to use the power of uh, the police badge to wield power, physical power over other human beings. And they were sick, man. And he, he could tell right there by the way they were acting in, in his classes. And so, you know, when somebody says something like that, you know things are bad. You start seeing people like Chris Cantwell get their way or these people in uh, Las Vegas get their way with, with police being killed. You'll just see that ratchet up and ratchet up where even more badge heavies come in, even more thugs, more rogue cops come in and it's just it'll get even more crazy and out of control than and then more militarist or militarization of the police forces they're already using the bearcats which are basically weapons of war that were brought over from iraq yep so you're going to see more things like that you're going to see more things like the lrad the long-range acoustical device 
Because they're going to need all of it to stop those uh, crazy patriot people who are shooting at the cops. Anything. The, the, anything they want will be justified by violence if that is what you choose to engage in. Thanks, Reggie, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Jesse's in Madison, Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live. Jesse. Hi. Uh, I called in last night, actually, right at the tail end of the show, talking about cop block and violence, et cetera. Sure. Um, yeah. I just I just think that their statement that they're releasing and the fallout with Christopher Cantwell, although I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, it just seems like a cop out to me. I mean, they, they okay. Hold on, just a, just to recap, you're talking about copblock.org. You're saying they are copping out by making a statement about Chris Cantwell, who was a former blogger of theirs that has been removed due to basically celebrating the deaths of the police and sort of calling for people to uh, engage in that sort of behavior. Right. You're saying um, you have a problem with Cop Block uh, speaking out about that? What was the statement that Cop Block made? It was somewhat lengthy, but um, basically that they're ad- they adhere to the non-aggression principle and they feel like what Chris Cantwell wrote about the Las Vegas shootings did not adhere to that because basically Chris was celebrating the deaths of these police uh, in the fact that you know there's no evidence these police were murderers. So the claim that this was to somehow get them back for the crimes they've committed is you know is ridiculous. Murder is not an appropriate response if someone hasn't committed murder, right? Like you can't. I mean, right. If, first of all, there's also the issue of it was. Even if they had committed murder, they didn't commit murder there at the CC's Pizza, nor five minutes before that. You know, so there wasn't like a hot pursuit or anything. Right. Where, so if you want, Jesse, we can bring you back here in a moment. You can continue your thoughts. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Hour number two is on the way. Plenty of time for you and your thoughts coming up. Uh, the remainder of the story about the Bitcoin entrepreneur at age 15 plus a Silk Road update. Free Talk Live. Want to know the secret to success, kid? One thing, the Granger catalog and Granger.com. Okay, that's two things. Oh, and Granger's got mobile apps. Those sure are convenient. Three things to succeed. Hey, and 1 800 Granger. I know that number by heart. Four things. There's hundreds of branches, too. Like I said, the one secret to keep this place running smoothly is Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Lumber Liquidator's low flooring prices just got even lower with the Buy More, Save More sale on now. Save $100, $300, even $500. The more you buy, the more you save on over 300 varieties of laminate, hardwood, and more. Save on striking and durable bamboo, including easy-to-install solid-click strand bamboo for just $219 a square foot. That's 37% less than other flooring stores. Go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Plus, get special 15-month financing. But hurry, this sale ends June 17th. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.56 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,273 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $613. 
USA Today reports the federal government plans to auction roughly $18 million worth of Bitcoin later this month. The 29,656.513 Bitcoins to be auctioned were seized from the Silk Road last fall. The anonymous website was a major sales point online for illegal drugs and other underground goods. The U.S. Marshals Service posted an announcement of the auction on their website yesterday. The sale will take place June 27th. The Bitcoins are to be auctioned off in blocks of 3,000, each worth roughly $1.8 million. The auction will take place over a 12-hour period from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. online on the U.S. Marshals website. Still under dispute are another 144,000 Bitcoins that are owned by Ross Ulbrich, the man behind the Silk Road. Federal agents arrested Ulbrich on October 1st in the science fiction section of the Glen Park branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Library. He was charged with drug trafficking, money laundering, and computer hacking, and is being held without bail in New York. Ulbrich has pled not guilty to all charges and says that his Bitcoin are not subject to civil forfeiture rules. Before being taken down, the Silk Road website had nearly 1 million customers and $1.2 billion worth of sales. Ulbrich allegedly collected commissions worth $80 million. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports Ukrainian officials are claiming something of a Russian invasion against the eastern separatist-held regions in the country, releasing video of three aging T-72 main battle tanks rolling through the streets of Snizny in the eastern Donetsk Oblast. Ukraine claims the tanks, backed by armored personnel carriers, snuck into Donetsk across the border at checkpoints held by the rebels. Russia denied the report and said they had no information about the tanks. The T-72 was the backbone of the Soviet Union's armed forces, and both Ukraine and Russia's militaries have thousands stored in reserve. It is unclear who is in control of these three particular tanks, though there is some speculation that the rebels acquired them somehow. Ukraine is insisting the tanks are proof Russia is arming the rebels, though it is unclear at this point, and indeed, three T-72 tanks don't seem likely to amount to a serious game-changer on the ground. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Shop $6 shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. The BBC reports a court in Egypt has cleared former Interior Minister Habib El Adli, who served under deposed President Hosni Mubarak, of charges of corruption and money laundering. El Adli was being retried after receiving a 12-year sentence in 2011. He ran Mubarak's security service for more than 10 years before the Egyptian leader was overthrown in the same year. Correspondents say he will stay in jail because he was convicted in an earlier case and faces charges in others. El Ali was also sentenced, along with the former president, to life imprisonment in 2012 over the killing of protesters. But the verdict was overturned on technical grounds and the pair are now being retried along with six police commanders. In May, Mubarak was sentenced to three years in prison after he was found guilty of embezzling public funds. Criminal proceedings are also ongoing against ousted Islamist President Mohamed Morsi, who is standing trial on a raft of charges along with senior leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood movement. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A harrowing situation on Broad Street came to its conclusion Thursday night as a group of hostages were freed from local comedy club The Laugh Up Lounge after a tense seven-minute stand-up set. Every once in a while he'd grab his notebook and I'd think maybe this is it, maybe he's going to let us go. But he just kept talking. Additionally, the onion recovered this video footage from the cell phone of one of the many captives. Please, if someone sees this, help us. 
Please help. Yeah, I'm micromanagement. You guys are totally going to wang it up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, no. Cool. I'm not a religious person, but at one point I said the Lord's Prayer, and it actually had a calming effect. Like, Jesus was standing next to me and said, you're going to get through this. I mean, sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, uh, don't take life for granted because uh, you just never know when something like this could happen. So. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. Again, freetalklive.com. With you tonight, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen has her own show. It's called ALP, and every week it stands for something new. What was your topic this week, Ellen? So this week we talked about uh, experiences that people have in their life and how you can forge meaning out of that. And um, Mm. I think ALP this week stood for Adversity Linked to Purpose. Allie came up with that spur of the moment in the show. Yeah, it was was actually a fun show. We got to share a few anecdotes about our lives and I shared some things that were potentially, uh, you know, embarrassing to me. Oh boy, got to tune in now. (laughs) ALPshow.com. You can go grab the archives there, and they go back for over half a year, maybe almost a full year at this point. This was our 45th episode. 45 episodes. That's awesome. So coming up soon, they'll be celebrating their year anniversary. Very exciting. You can go and get more of Ellen at ALPshow.com. We're going to go back to your phone calls and thoughts to bring you up to speed. We've been talking earlier in the show about a 15-year-old entrepreneur who made $100,000 in two years on a $1,000 Bitcoin investment. Maybe he made more than that. We just know he cashed out a hundred grand and started his own website, started a, a business. Basically, we can talk more about his story. And then, uh, you know, the violence issue has reared its head again. Uh, people, people are talking about the Las Vegas shooting and uh, the shooters involved in that case. Some of the things that has been revealed, uh, some of the things that have been revealed about them after their deaths, uh, as people have been pawing through social bookmarking sites and things like that, profiles, etc., finding out that they might have liked uh, a Larkin Rose presentation, I believe, at some point. I'm not sure how Adam Kokesh got all mixed up. Maybe he's just been speaking out about it, but he's in the news about this as well. His and- name was somehow linked in one of the things of he, you know, these people liked a Larkin Rose video mm-hmm. and apparently were fans of or subscribers to Adam, Adam Kokesh. Okay. So uh, we've got Jesse on the line in Madison, Wisconsin. He's sharing his thoughts on the matter of violence against the police, which I completely oppose uh, personally. But I'm, you know, that's I don't know if I'm in the minority on that. I think there's a there's a lot of people who believe that violence is the solution, and I would like to talk them out of it. Uh, go ahead, Jesse. Okay. Uh, well, I just want to say up front, I don't necessarily support violence against police necessarily. Oh, that's good. But uh, what? What Cap Black is doing, though, specifically, uh, I just find it very disingenuous. You know, they go, they hammer home the point every day with their social media that not that cops are agents of systemic abuse and subjugation, that you should feel threatened, even being in the presence of one, uh, even if one gets behind you with his lights on. They hammer home the point that there's no such thing as a good cop, just like there's no such, you can't point to specific nazis or bloods and crips and say well this one's a good gang member this one's a bad gang member because they are members of the same entity they create they foster an environment where that entity can thrive and they they push that agenda forward whether or not the individuals themselves are good people and when something like this happens they want to distance themselves from those kind of statements and oh well these two cops in this cc's pizza We don't know if they did anything bad. We don't know if they were good people or not, but yet they, you know, they... Well, no, what they they said was they don't know if they committed murder, which is what happened to them. They were murdered. And by the way, yeah, Cop Block is very critical of the police in general, and they 
advocate for holding the police accountable with video cameras, not with bullets and not with your own decision making about which cops deserve it or which don't or whatever. Uh, Cop Block encourages people to hold the police accountable through peaceful methods. The video camera is the new gun. It is as dangerous, if not more so, to the police than a firearm. Because, again, the police will spin violence in a way that can destroy freedom by using it as an excuse to pass more laws and, and regulations against people. Whereas with video, the police can't spin that. You're you're still alive, likely, if you've been recording video. You get to narrate the video. You get to talk about what happened to you. You get to show the video to people. Whereas if you are dead after shooting up a couple of cops, all you get or whatever anybody manages to dig up and say about you later on and make you look crazy as a result of that. If you are alive and you have video, you are in a much stronger position to delegitimize the police state from that perspective. Right, and it's a lot easier to present the truth to people and convince them of something than it is to generalize cops and go out and kill them, which, which is like completely based on a false assumption Just that just because they belong to this group of people that they're guilty for you know something that you may not even know that they've done. Well, that's not what Kyle Black would have you believe, and they most certainly can spin a videotape. They can even... The cops who shot the guy for uh, illegal camping on the side of the hill in New Mexico, that was on video, and the cops ruled, oh, they did nothing wrong, even though that was plain to anyone who's reasonable. That There's bad cops out there, and the cops will almost always rule that, uh, that they're the ones who did nothing wrong. Exactly, but- and, they don't, and, they do, and the cops do not need an excuse to pass more legislation, to subjugate people further, to use violence. They've been doing it since day one. The fact that people are using it back against them is not what's causing them to use violence in the first place. It's the opposite of that. No, but you're missing the point. But, it can incre- it can increase the clip at which new laws are passed. Anytime a cop gets shot, there's always parades and all kinds of uh, you know tears and hand you know hand wringing about what can be done. What right? Can we you're do? making martyrs out of them. Well, maybe that's uh, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe if the clip gets increased at the pace at which this. It increases. Right, well, why don't you take us down your uh, your police killing fantasy road? So, what do you see happening if you if people start icing the police? Well, like I said, maybe if uh, maybe it'll. I'm not saying that it's a good thing necessarily. I'm just saying. Well, it sounds like you're kind of dancing around dinner. that. Yeah, maybe you're not coming right well, out and saying it's a good thing, but you certainly aren't I, saying it's a bad thing to kill the police, are you? I'm 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 definitely not shedding any tears over it. That's for sure. Um, you know, as as Malcolm X said. A man who will tell you in one breath that he believes in freedom, but in the next breath will tell you what he doesn't believe in doing to get that freedom or what he won't do to get that freedom doesn't place the proper emphasis on freedom. Malcolm X also uh, changed toward the end of his life, and he stopped being a violent uh, person towards others, stopped threatening others, and he saw himself as part of humanity, and that was right before he was killed Uh, by his former brothers. Yeah, exactly. Look what it got him, two bullets in the chest in front of his family. So what was your solution then? More violence, more killings, and that's going to make the world a better place? Well, when has a revolution or any kind of change, major social change like that, ever happened without violence? Like, What's your historic precedent for that? Gandhi? What makes Martin you, Luther what, King? What makes you all of the Martin memorable Jesus. historical change has been by people who are have been advocating for peace. And I believe it was the Erica Chenoweth book that Mark cited the other night about... Uh, about nonviolent resistance, showing that nonviolent resistance has gotten more and more effective over time as compared to violent resistance. Right. And as people become more interconnected through the Internet and technology, uh, revolutions are going to move more towards uh, an intellectual aspect. They're not going to be so much physical. So you can you can have an entire uh, change of society just like through uh, like mental means. The Vietnam War protest. And aren't well, you, now there, there was violence what, what during the really Vietnam mean? War what protest, that really and that was the National Guard shooting students on the campus of Kent State University mm-hmm. because the students did not disperse when ordered to do so. What did the Vietnam War protest change? America is mired in two unwinnable wars in Iraq and Afghanistan right now. What did it change? How is the Vietnam War protest that ended the Vietnam War in any way connected to Iraq and Afghanistan? Those events were it, it nearly 30 Vietnam years War. apart. It Do you ask what? It stopped the government from doing the exact same thing. You, you, asked, like 
Do you ask for examples of peaceful protests that had a change? We have the Vietnam a- War protest made a change in society at the time that it happened. This is a long road, at Jesse. Time, You're not just not going to have peace that- tomorrow when you wake up. I wish that we could have that, and your violent road is not going to take you there either. It's only going to make things worse. The reason we have continuing war is because people are angry. People want to control others. They love the military. They love the idea of nations. They love their nation, and they want to see their nation uh, you know, rule over all the others. And there's a real martial mentality, and it's a violent mentality, and you exemplify it, in my opinion. 855 450 free. You just believe in freedom and exemplify it. You think you can get to freedom through the same tools that the state uses to get to control. Sorry, not going to work. Free Talk Live. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything if you dial here toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got a website. You just go to freetalklive.com to enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. You need focus? Are you feeling fatigued? Want to get that extra edge where it counts and when it counts? Maybe there could be something that might help you get out of that rut and give you the focus you need and help you get things done. You want to look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Modup.net. That's M-O-D-U-P dot net. Look into it for yourself. They've got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. And modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You will save 33% if you pay with Bitcoin. And if you use code FTL, you'll get 10 free tablets with your order at modup.net. So use code FTL. And remember that free talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So look into it for yourself, and when you're ready, modup.net offers great service at a great price. That's modup.net with code FTL. As we continue here, your thoughts certainly welcome the age-old topic of violence versus peace as a solution to the violence of the state. There are a number of people out there that love to rattle the saber, and they get all excited when somebody, not them, of course, when somebody else goes ahead and uh, offs some police and then, of course, inevitably loses their own lives uh, in the process. We'll continue. And I'm not saying that to encourage anyone to go and do it. It's just an observation. It seems to me that there are a lot of people who like to talk about violence, but they like other people to do their dirty work for them. Maybe that's because at some level they realize that it's a really bad idea yes. to engage in violence. That violence is going to lead to your doom. Right. And it seems like opting out would be the most obvious solution because opting, any, out, of, a, opting out of like the violent coercion that is the state. Like if, if you're using the same methods as they use, if you go around killing people like like a police officer would uh like if a police officer did shoot somebody and you decide that you're going to take it into your hands and go kill him like a vigilante, like, that's just going to make everybody angry because, you know, police have a lot of support. And if if you're using the same methods as them, then you're no better than they are. I agree. Let's go to Bill in Jackson, Mississippi, listening to WPBQ. Hello, Bill. Hi, guys. Uh, Just picked up on the uh, Kent State thing that you were discussing a minute ago, and... uh, I was actually in broadcasting at the time, and I remember uh, something that happened with that. Initially, it was reported that uh, what you said actually happened, but upon further investigation, it was later revealed that the uh, National Guard were actually guilty of incompetence. They were supposed to have rubber bullets at the time, and some accidentally got the, uh, the, the real ammo. However... What really happened with the, the case of the mob, yes, there was a disturbance, but uh, there was a noise that appeared to some in the National Guard just, uh, like it was a, a, a ammo, I mean, like a gun going off. And so what they did was they, they were not given an order. They just, by instinct, shot over the heads of the uh, the group because they, they none of the students, I don't think, had, had any, any armament or anything. But the, 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 the ones that, that were actually hit were, were back behind the crowd going to class. And so it's even worse than what, what mm. was initially reported. Wow. You have to say, I, I did not know about that. Yeah, I didn't know that, you know, I, I had heard witness reports that some of the people aimed their guns straight ahead, others aimed up, and others aimed at the ground. So you're saying that every member of the National Guard had their guns aimed up in the air? Well, I don't, I don't know that all of them did, but it, it, if you look at the location diagrams that are, are on file, 
you'll see where the victims were. And they, they were going along a sidewalk uh, way back behind the crowd because the, the actual bullets went over the heads of the crowd and, and ended up hitting those, those students that were not even involved with, with the, uh, the demonstration at all. So that's still reckless discharge of a firearm by a member of the military that wound up causing somebody to die. Yes, exactly, and, and uh, there were some veterans in the crowd, and, and they, they commented on that later. I mean, Vietnam veterans had come back from the war, and many of them were, were, were very much opposed to the war. And so many of them were in the actual anti-war uh, demonstrations, and they commented on the, the inability of, of the guard that, uh, to, to know what they're doing. So why were they not firing blanks? Why were they actually shooting bullets? Didn't they know that that well, could potentially end up hurting somebody? Like, I'm exactly. sure they didn't that, mean that, it to happen, but... That was, that was part of the error of the guard. They, they were not even supposed to even have the real ammo. And uh, it was not really uh, hmm. an, uh, oh, an actual riot going on at the time. It was just a disturbance. And someone thought they heard a, a gun, and, and of course, it, as, as soon as the, the first one shot, then they all shot. And, and that, that was the incompetence of the guard. It was, they were called on the carpet for it, but nothing was ever done. Thanks they for sharing the story tonight, Bill. I appreciate you, appreciate your call. Appreciate you getting that out there tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're going to go to the phones here. We've got Rich Paul on the line calling from jail. Rich, you're on Free Talk Live. How you doing, Ian? Hey there, welcome. You're on the air with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl here tonight. Hey, how are you, Dar- I'm Daryl. How you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Doing all right. Go what's ahead. on your mind? Yeah, what's up, Rich? Um, well, not too much. Um, in jail. Talked to my uh, attorney today, and uh, apparently you're in I'm jail. Just to, to bring hearing. our listeners up to speed, you're in jail for uh, violation of probation after having been uh, convicted. That's right for cannabis uh, sales, so you never hurt anybody, just to let our new listeners know. Uh, so what's the latest? Um, let's see. Well, it looks like there's going to be a hearing on uh, June 26th, and uh, that, for those of you who aren't aware, is right in the middle of Pork Fest, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how many people make it down from Pork Fest for the, uh, for the hearing. But they're hoping to get... Uh, my attorney, at least, is hoping to get my probation discharged one way or the other, which uh, I I hope that will work out that way. That too, seems because, amazingly uh, optimistic. I mean, what are the odds of that happening? Yeah, how is he going to accomplish that? Um, I I really don't know what the odds are. I assume that there would uh, that in exchange for terminating probation, I would end up spending a certain amount of additional time in jail. And I don't know how much time that would be, but, you know, for it might me, be worth I'd rather it. be... Uh, yeah, well, it could well be. There's there's certainly a certain, a certain ratio where it would be worth it. You know, where I would rather, you know, I would rather spend, uh, say, one day in jail than ten days on probation. Um... Yeah, probation so, sucks. I mean, they own you basically. They can come into your house. They can toss your stuff. They can uh, they can test your urine whenever they want to. They can demand obedience. They can demand you show up wherever they want you to show up. And it's ridiculous. I don't know if you have more you want to share. Hang on, Rich. We'll uh, we'll talk off the air here in a moment. Eight fifty five four fifty free. We'll keep you up to date on what's going on with Rich and take your calls. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. 
Free Talk Live. Our education system is frankly government run, government yeah. funded, um, and we're dumbed down. You could you could and go down just, the laundry list of the different things uh, that people would admit that the government did wrong or botched up or cost way too much, and it still doesn't have any effect on them. They still just bounce right back and say, well, we need government to do all these things. Well, yes, I, they make some mistakes. Yes, they spend billions of dollars too much. Sure, they kill innocent people around the world, but we need them. <laughs> 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 we have to have I, them I do these it, things. I find it quite amazing that, you, you know, they say the first thing they seem to do is, like, oh, turn to government. They've got the solution somehow. Yep. Goodness knows That's happens. what they've been programmed to do by programmed the government schools. Exactly. Brainwashed. Absolutely brainwashed. And they're so dumb about it. They believe it's the case. However, you, you then ask the next question, if you, if you dare to, is uh, you say, well, OK, well, would you trust any politicians? And the first answer is no way. Right. right. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think per- of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever is on your mind. Just dial in toll-free, even if you're in jail, if you're uh, one of the Liberty activists here in New Hampshire. Thank goodness right now, I think Rich is the only one who's in jail. We don't have uh, a huge glut of that at the moment. Um, and hopefully it'll stay that way. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We'll give you more updates on Rich as time goes on. Daryl, you'd asked a good question during the break, and that was about Rich's appeal. Uh, again, for new listeners, Rich, was he's been on the show a few times as kind of a guest co-host, and he went to jail for standing up on principle uh, about a year ago. And he spent the good por- a good portion of uh, of the year. He was sentenced to a year in, in jail, and so you know, with good time, he got out after nine months, basically. Sentenced to that for selling cannabis. And he had faced down a hundred years on those charges. Uh, there was also a purported LSD charge as well uh, in there. But again, no, ab- no uh, idea of him possibly hurting anybody. He engaged in consensual activities with other adults, consens- consensual sales. And, uh, and the FBI ended up using, an, uh, they used a heroin dealer to get at Rich Paul. They wanted to have Rich turn against the activist community here in New Hampshire and here in the Keene area. And he stood strong on principle and faced down 100 years in prison. Now he's looking at more time in jail because of a violation of probation. But all of the while, there's been this appeal working on his original case, which has to do with the jury instructions that were given to his jury at the trial. Because here in New Hampshire, it's the only state of... All of the states that I know of that actually has a jury nullification and kind of like the – I don't know if you call it an affirmative defense, but 
uh, that, that you can bring up during nullification in court in New Hampshire. In a lot of states, they'll call a mistrial. You'll get a contempt of court charge if you talk about jury nullification. Right. Here, you or your attorney uh, can bring it up and talk about it, explain it to the jury, explain to them why you think they should vote not guilty because it's a bad law. And you can't do that in most places. The judge did not give the jury the best instructions when he did give them instructions, and they were very deficient on the in the area of jury nullification. The judge made it sound like the that the jury still had to judge the case based on the facts and not judge the law itself, which of course is what jury nullification is. It's where you as a juror vote not guilty because you think the law is bad. Doesn't matter if they caught Rich on video selling cannabis to an undercover informant. If you think cannabis should be legal and sales of it should be legal, then you should vote not guilty. Right, and that's what juries are for: is defining the law. But the way he, the, oh, the well, way the judge nice. worded it, he was like, "Judge him based on what the law says." Yep, and uh, the, so that's the kind of the gist of the appeal. That's the issue that is being taken to the Supreme Court here in New Hampshire, and that appeal is scheduled to be heard in less than a week. So it'll be uh, next week. We'll uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be carpooling up there, so yes. we'll be able to tell you more about it at that time. And, of course, they're not going to decide the case right then. I don't know how long it takes them in New Hampshire Several to, months. Yeah, to hear versus decide a case. But it's you know it's moving slowly, as things tend to do in this so-called justice system. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got uh, Brian on the line in New Hampshire. And, by the way, speaking of New Hampshire, you could come join us up here and join the fun and all the activism. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more about that. And porkfest.com for the upcoming Porcupine Freedom Festival, where Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live every night. P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. That starts on June 22nd. But it's not too late to get involved and come on up and experience it. Brian, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, guys. I uh, called back in March after uh, being arrested or for you know, asserting First Amendment rights at the town meeting. Um, Just to get you up to date on the uh, case, it's scheduled for trial on the 18th, but um, through discovery and a bunch of uh, volunteers working um, behind the scenes, um, we have discovered that the prosecutor who prosecutes for several towns in the area, Lyme, uh, this is New Hampshire, so Lyme, Orford, Canaan, Enfield, Danbury, um, has not passed the bar exam. (laughs) Um, And so we have several legal motions I've filed. uh, He's basically committing fraud. Wow. um, So this guy's working for the state as a prosecutor, as a regional prosecutor, and he's not actually an attorney? Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so right now I have I've filed I filed some investigative stuff with the attorney general's office investigating the local shenanigans that resulted in my arrest and of course they did a one day investigation and said nothing here. Mm-hmm. See, that's that's um, quite but, interesting, but uh for people who are not up to date on the story like including me, I don't know exactly what this is about. You say you were expressing first amendment rights and you were arrested uh, yeah, for that? So, but, um the Local moderator in Grafton, I've been involved in Grafton town politics for, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, I, I'm the, I was the planning board chairman, uh, and uh, so I know all the political activists. Uh, the moderator was handed, um, handed off uh, the title of moderator for the last town meeting, um, and it was set up as a town versus some collectivist group of free staters. Um, They had NPR here. They had the Valley News here. um, And that was the MO. Um, And basically, um, as the moderator was reading her version of what is Grafton, a quaint little town, I was looking over the rules for the meeting. I've been involved in politics for a long time. And uh, at the end of the, you know, her speech and stuff, I had time to read through all the rules. Um, there was this new thing, rules of decorum, um, which prevented swearing, uh, prevented personal attacks, and some other nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it for you challenging the rules? 
Um, well, she tried to, after her quaint little speech on what the town of Grafton is, um, she tried to ramrod the rules through. And, you know, everyone saw oh, Grafton's such a beautiful place, you know, whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm waving. They, we had these little pink cards. Pink, that was funny because it's pink, commo, commie pink cards. <laughs> I'm waving mine, like, frantically trying to get someone's attention and finally, well, everyone's had a chance to read through the rules, and people are like, oh, wait, we haven't read through the rules. I said, point of order. I think the rules of decorum violate the First Amendment. Mm. That was my opening salvo in the meeting. And uh, How long so between when you said that uh, and you ended up in handcuffs? Uh, no, no. It, it, I was calm. I No, I was calm. I, I said, I frankly, I... You know, I tend to get passionate about politics and mm. see things. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm my worst own worst enemy when I feel my rights are getting attacked. But you got so arrested, I, right? I eventually, uh, over an hour into the meeting, oh, okay. after after uh, um, that, there were several things that happened. Um, well, we don't have we time for have, several things. I think Ellen just wanted okay. kind of a recap of, uh, of okay. what had occurred. Well, so you spoke, well, uh, and somebody at the meeting didn't like what you had to say. Maybe they claimed you were speaking out of turn or whatever, and they had you arrested. Well, it, it, there's a video of it all, so you can see it all take place. How would one go and find uh, that video? Um, it's Grafton. Hold on. It's right on YouTube. I think the search is Grafton Town Deliberative Session. I, uh, yeah, well, I don't I'm imagine there have been too many arrests at the Grafton Town Deliberative Session, so I mean, I guess if you put the word arrest in there, you'll probably Grafton find out. Grafton Deliberative Session, one of four. Well, i got to say, good um, luck with the uh, the case, Brian. I appreciate the update, finding out okay. that, thanks for the call, finding out that the person prosecuting you isn't even an attorney yet. They haven't passed the bar exam. I wonder how they can enforce the rules when they're not even playing by their own rules. It's very rare. They Is play there any rules. requirement that the prosecutor actually be a member Maybe of the not. bar? Maybe not, because I know that with uh, here in Keene, they have a police prosecutor who is definitely not a member of the bar. Right. So, you know, I, I don't see it as some sort of, you know, evil conspiracy to have somebody that can't pass the bar be a prosecutor. I don't think it's even one of the rules. I could be wrong. Well, but I'd I don't like to, think it is. I'd like it to be so that more people who aren't attorneys can uh, act in people's cases, not necessarily on the side of the state, but certainly on the side of the people. It's nice when you can have a friend who's going to help you out and they're not going to charge you an attorney rate. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can bring up what you want here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com You've been lied to, lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and JCPenney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. 
left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan, penalties and interest killing you, missing tax returns, being garnished or levied, not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. I invite you to take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Inviting you online as well. You can interact on our website by submitting content right there to the front page of the site at freetalklive.com. So enjoy that. You can vote on the stuff that's already there. Maybe you don't have something to submit. You can vote up what you like and vote down what you do not all of it is free. You need a Reddit account and a Free Talk Live account. Both of those things are free. It takes just a moment to link them both together to make your experience all the more interactive at freetalklive.com. And if you value your online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before your info reaches the internet service provider that you've that you're using, It'll be encrypted, meaning the ISP won't be able to snoop on you anymore. They won't be able to keep any records of the websites you're visiting or the search terms you're entering, which they're probably keeping those records now for anywhere up to five years. You can stop that from happening. Just go and get the software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. Uh, plus, there's instructions to get ProXP and hopping on Linux. It's a little bit different, but it's actually pretty simple. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get started you can use code FTL20 to get 20% off the price of the premium account for the lifetime of your account. With their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to which you can connect, and you can even privately torrent and, as of course, get past regionally blocked websites. Very useful service. Privacy, it takes effort. In this case, it's not a whole lot of effort. You just have to go to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab their software, and then get started. There's a free account, so you can jump right into it and, and try it out, and then upgrade to premium for just 5 bucks a month using our discount code FTL20 when you buy the annual plan at proxpn.com slash FTL code FTL20. We go to Chris Cantwell. He is on the line, I presume, in New York. Chris, you're on via Skype. Good to be with you guys. Thanks hey, for having me on. What's on your mind tonight? I'm just so happy that the, the people who wanted to shut me up are doing such a poor job of it. I, I, I Somebody told me that you guys uh, had mentioned me on Monday, and I was listening to the podcast of it, and then I decided to tune in tonight, and I, the first thing I heard was a caller talking about the, the Vegas cop killings, and it's just I'm just so ecstatic that it's uh, 
the people who want to stop this conversation from happening are failing so miserably. Well, who wants to shut you up, Chris? I mean, you seem to uh, you know have a, a quite a quite an outlet that you've created for yourself at your website, ChristopherCantwell.com. Who is out to get you? Well, I don't. I don't want to you know say that people are out to get me, but I mean they're they're uh, you know as you know I've been expelled from the Free State Project. I will not be at the uh, the annual Porcupine Freedom Festival this year, but that's you know then maybe I'll go visit Rich's hearing instead. Um, you know, I've recently had my cop block credentials yanked and, uh, but it doesn't seem to be stopping the conversation from happening. And I'm happy about that. But I would want to say to all of your listeners and all of my readers, please don't go out and get yourself killed. That would be a terrible idea. Well, that was one of the things that I think was overlooked about your article, the, the more recent article, there've been more than one that have caused uh, controversy, but the one about the, uh, the recent one about the LA or not LA Las Vegas, uh, killers, that, uh, you know, towards the end, you kind of talked about your story and why it is that you thought you were glad that you hadn't gone on a violent uh, killing spree. Yeah, precisely. I mean, I've had a, a lot of really negative experiences with the government, and there have been times when I really felt like there, you know, it wasn't worth uh, carrying on anymore. And, uh, you know, the idea of sort of suicide by cop, go out and take some of my oppressors with me on the way out started seeming very appealing. And I really... I really deeply sympathize with people who feel that way, and I, and I think that their anger and their— You mean you empathize with them. I can empathize with it because I used to feel that way as well. I remember you know, buying body armor and stuff like that and thinking about that stuff a lot. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, I think that, I think that their feelings are really legitimate, and, and, I, and I have— um, when, when they go out and do these things, I understand why they do them. Uh, but I also have found that uh, while I do believe that this is, you know, something that's necessary and inevitable, I also would say that when you go out and you do something like that, just sort of jumping the gun and going out as a, you know, lone gunman sort of going to uh, just end my life today, I don't think that it's uh, the most productive of things. I no. think that people could do a lot more by sort of joining communities and learning about liberty and explaining it to people. I agree with almost everything you said, except for the fact that you think it's going to be inevitable that things will come to violence. And obviously See, that's one of the cruxes on which, upon which we have a, a pretty firm disagreement. I don't believe that violence is inevitable, at least in the long run, as far as getting us to, to peace. Obviously, there will be violence used against activists between now and that, uh, that period of time. But it seems to me that every time you get somebody using violence from the activist side against the police, that you get a larger police state as a result of that. I mean, haven't you seen that happen, you know, in the various different instances? Uh, you remember the old tank guy, whatever his name was, where he drove a tank around, a t uh, kind of his made his own little battle tank out of like a caterpillar and uh, just destroyed the hell out of uh, the town that he lived in with like a machine gun. Then he ended up bla blasting himself. There's actually yeah. been a couple of guys that yeah, have done true. things like more that. Than once. But you remember that one, right, Chris? Yeah, I've, I've heard stories like that go around, destroy a bunch of private property. Certainly not a good way to behave. Well, no, actually, he destroyed a lot of government property, as I understand it. I mean, he may have killed, some, destroyed some private property, too, but... He, I think he t took down like Town Hall or whatever, a few different places. There was a guy actually in Troy, New Hampshire, who took out the front of the police station there. And, uh, you know, they rebuilt the police station and they rebuilt that town, too. And, you and know, then there was the guy in Vermont last year that oh, yeah, got that something and ran over a bunch of the <laughs> cop cars. And then they just bought new cop cars. Sure. Right. Well, being destructive in that manner is only going to make them respond even more forcefully than they would have if that hadn't happened, which which I think it's great that we're all in agreement here that using nonviolent means like opting out is definitely the most efficient way to go about it. Well, that's always been I, I don't I, I don't know that we're all in agreement here. So you're saying, you know, opt out. And, you know, if I could opt out, well, then I wouldn't be talking about violence, right? Because I would have the option of opting out. The, the problem here is that I don't have the option of opting out, that, that people will break into my house and shoot my pets and take me into a cage and leave me in a, but in the a other locker problem, room with a rapist. That's you, the while problem. you're right about that, Chris, the other problem with the advocates for violence is they're not willing to try opting out. They're not willing to say no, most of them. They just talk behind their keyboards about how you know badass they'll be someday when the government comes after them or how awesome it is that they think that other people are doing that um, and encouraging that sort of thing, whereas they themselves would never be willing to not pay a tax. They would never be willing to you know, take a, a case to court, uh, you know, take a risk for their activism, but yet someday you're supposed to believe that when it finally comes down to it, they're going to drop everything and pick up their arsenal and uh, go to town against uh, against the state. I just don't believe it. 
I, I don't believe most of them either. I mean, most of this is just, you know, internet fantasy chat. You so know? And so I, let's and talk I, about you, Chris Cantwell. You're, uh, you're making a move soon. Can we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. I just don't want to release my move-in date. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really even know what it is. I just know it's sometime this summer. I don't know how much more uh, detailed you want to get, but you're yeah, moving. Yeah, some, sometime in the very near future, I am moving back to Keene, New Hampshire. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I miss you guys. You guys are wonderful people to be around. Well, you know, I, I like you, Chris, and and, and it's hard for uh, – it's, it's, it's tough to be your friend – and I'd like to kind of explain why I say that, because I get, you know, people who are friendly with you get critique, right? Like there were people who didn't go to Keene Vention last year, the convention that I put on here in Keene, because you were going to be speaking at the at the Keene Vention. And I think it was their loss because they missed an awesome uh, event. But, they sure did. Um, you know, regardless, and you missed the aw an awesome event because you hid out in your room the whole time. But that's, that's another story. Uh, so... I don't even know where I was going to go with that. <laughs> you said it was hard it's to be his tough friend. Being his friend. Just... Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. So, um, you know, I, I want to be uh, friendly with you to show you that I, you know, first of all, I can empathize. Like I said, I, I used to believe in, in violence as a solution to sort of show a message of peace, to be an example of peace. And in the same way, I'm friendly with the police. Like, you're better than the police because you don't actually use violence. You'll talk about violence. The police actually will use violence against people. And I get... I get S from people because I'm friendly to the cops, too. You know, if I'm around and the police are around, we might have a conversation. And in a lot of cases, it'll be friendly. And so some people will talk to me about that. Why are you so friendly to the police? Those guys are bad. Well, you know, they're human beings and uh, they have feelings and they have families. And uh, I want to show them that peace is the way, just like I want to show you the same thing, Chris. Well, so you're not that different from the cops. And if you humanize the cops and make them feel human, yeah. then maybe they will start to have some inner reflection and realize that what they're doing is wrong. I believe that. I really do. But Chris, go ahead with your thoughts. Well, I, I don't like you saying that I'm just like the cops. That's a pretty nasty thing <laughs> no. to say to a guy like me. But, you know. You can handle uh, it. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, I recognize, you know, that, that I'm a, I can be a, a tough guy to be around because a lot of people have, you know, a wide range of reactions to me. You know, there's a lot of people who really love what I do and there's a lot of people who hate what I do and there is not a whole lot in between now, is there? Um, no, and that's not a bad place to be. It just means that, you know, people are paying attention. And uh, and, I, and I think you do start a good conversation, one that needs to be had because a lot of people agree with you and they need to have their minds changed. So thanks for doing that, Chris. And, and by the way, when I was saying that you were like the police, what I meant was that I get a lot of crap for both things, you know, being friendly to the police and being friendly to you. And my motivations are the same. But you're not like the police in that you don't use violence. And in fact, I've seen you de-escalate a violent situation and I thought you did an awesome job at that. So we'll see you back okay. here in Keene, Chris. Thanks for the call see you tonight. Soon. Chris Cantwell from ChristopherCantwell.com. Hour three's on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,273, silver opened at $19.53, and Bitcoin is trading at $598.24. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, the Obama administration has been quietly advising local police to keep quiet about surveillance technology and practices, including sweeping up metadata from entire neighborhoods. That word from the Associated Press, which reports that Stingray, a program used by police to track cell phone data, disguises itself as a cell phone company's tower. That results in the cell's data transmitting directly to police, circumventing the need to request information from cell phone companies. Documents confirm the government asked police to withhold information about the equipment and how it works. Nearly one-third of the Defense Department's $5 million budget has been spent on Stingray. Former prisoner of war Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is finally on his way home. NBC News reports that Bergdahl left a German hospital Thursday afternoon and will arrive in San Antonio Friday. There, he'll be taken to Brook Army Medical Center. Officials call this part of his reintegration process Phase 3. It excludes media access and public appearances. Upon rescue, Bergdahl was sent to a German hospital due to his physical condition, but is now ready to travel. A 14-year-long war with no end in sight has done nothing to protect the country of Iraq from terroristic violence. That's according to a Daily Beast report that says terrorists have become a full-blown army, seizing the country's second-largest city on Tuesday. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Sham have morphed from a terrorist menace into a military force. After gaining possession of heavy weapons and vehicles, the U.S. provided to Iraq's military. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY when you order 10 or more posters, and you'll get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Three months from the 13th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, activists, alternative media groups, and first responders are working to revive the 9-11 Truth movement. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, the Anti-Media, and the Conscious Resistance Network are organizing several days of information sharing and street action, as well as music and speaking from September 11th to September 13th in New York City. For more information, visit GroundZero911.com. Deputies from Carnes County, Texas, southeast of San Antonio, came across two SUVs filled with illegal immigrants near U.S. Highway 181 and County Road 211. As police pulled over one vehicle, the other fled, resulting in a high-speed chase. The driver of the second vehicle crashed into a brushy area while one migrant was run over but was still able to flee. The suspects have not yet been located. Carnes County Sheriff Dwayne Villanueva says such activity, especially involving juveniles, is increasing in the region. Most of the migrants caught were from Honduras. NASA scientists based in Houston worked with an artist to create a prototype of a spacecraft capable of traveling faster than the speed of light. Space travel scientist Dr. White says it's possible to bend space-time, covering large distances instantly. 
The ship would include two rings surrounding the central spacecraft to wrap space-time and travel many light years in a matter of days. The ship, called IXS Enterprise, resembles that of the one featured on the popular show Star Trek. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 21st, 2007, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the final installment in the widely popular Harry Potter series, was released as excited fans all over the world eagerly flipped to the book's final pages to find out if Harry and Lord Voldemort finally f***. Author J.K. Rowling had already succeeded in creating one of the most popular literary franchises of all time. And of course, much of that success was owed to the expertly crafted sexual tension that steadily built up between the series' protagonist, schoolboy wizard Harry Potter, and the Dark Lord Voldemort. Everyone in the country wanted to know whether or not they would f and if they did f how many times would they f and who would be f who. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of Mother Teresa, if there is one lesson to learn from the past, it's that no matter what you do, there will always be a bunch more crippled dying kids. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you may bring up anything that you like toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. So we kind of digressed for an hour there into uh, a topic about violence and the state and the use of violence versus not versus peace. And if you want to re uh, review that, check it out later on in our podcast on uh, the archives at freetalklive.com. To come back around to where we were earlier in the show, because I think it's an interesting topic, a uh, 15-year-old young man who has started his own business using money that he earned from investing in Bitcoin two years ago. So back in 2012, I think, what was it, like six bucks in the summertime of 2012 or something like that? Sounds about right, yeah. Uh, he invested $1,000 that he got from his grandmother in Bitcoin, and he cashed out at least $100,000 worth of his Bitcoin and started up his own website, which you've actually been poking around on. It's called Botangle. Uh, Daryl, you've been poking on the site, yes. kind of getting a feel for what it's like and how many people are using it. You said people have been signing up during the show tonight. There have been, since the beginning of the show, there have been 13 people who have signed up. They've got their user statistics yeah. of how many people are members and how many people are huh. online. And oh, at the beginning of the show, there was 1,085 members. Now there's 1,098 this site just started in uh, May, actually, and I don't know it's when. It's still in, in May, beta. Still in beta. The article we're reading at Mashable.com uh, says that he only had 100 users, so he's he's had 10 times the signups than what he had in three days. This article's only been out for three days, so it sounds like he's been having some tremendous growth as a result of this yes. media coverage. So it's a neat story because he's 15, and you don't often hear about young people being entrepreneurial. And the reason for that is because they're not encouraged to be. The government school system doesn't have an entrepreneur's class. At least it didn't have it in any school I ever uh, went to. There's, uh, there was a math class one year where they taught us how to write checks. But there, there was a thing that started up, I think it was either my junior or senior year, that was called Scythe. What's Students that? in free enterprise. Oh, and was it they, a, like a, a an after school thing, or was it a class which you no, got it, it wasn't for? a class. It, it was one of these groups that you could you know belong like to, like the key so, club or whatever. I don't know what key club. I is, don't either. But, I just know that there was one at the high school I went to. But yeah, so it was one of the you know extracurricular things, and they would encourage people to sort of do small businessy sort of stuff and teach them how to do business. Yeah, and I think that's a great idea for 
you know, young younger people because usually they have really you know, highly functioning uh, creativity skills. And sure, they haven't been completely beaten down by society. Right, you don't have to be a prodigy to to be able to think of a great idea. And you know, I, I think it was. But kind you of, do have to have an environment in which that's encouraged and where you can act on that idea. Oh, right? certainly. And right. I, I think it was kind. Of, uh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny that he said the schools in his area were limited. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think well, that most schools are limited sure, in, in that aspect. That. That, he doesn't that know that because he's probably not been outside of his area too much. Right, but uh, it's just a general idea. Uh, like the the curriculum that schools use generally don't involve things like free enterprise or like teaching you how to be an entrepreneur. Right. But those uh, curricula you were talking about or the, the group that you were discussing, Daryl, w- would it bring in uh, business people? Or was it relying on teachers to teach you entrepreneurialism? I don't remember because that was nearly 20 years ago. I just remember that there was a thing and I remember what it was called. But generally, this isn't something that's encouraged as part of official school curriculum. This isn't, uh, there's no class on entrepreneurialism in general in most places. Uh, The government school system, you go and you look at the history of the government school system. You look at the Prussian model, which John Taylor Gatto talks about. He was this uh, teacher of the year for New York State. He's come out against the government school system. And he talks about how the government school system has always, from day one, been about creating a worker drone who does not question authority, who does not question his circumstances in life, does not question the idea that you're supposed to go to school, go to college, go get a job, work the career for you know 40 years, and then retire at age 65. No, you're not supposed to question these things. And then you're supposed to call that happiness, oh, and along the way, have some sex and have some children so they can start the whole process over again, and you can make money for some big corporation Is this somewhere. the idea of like civic duty that they're trying to impose on people? Somewhat. Yeah, I don't know what they would call it, but it seems like it's the common narrative, right? Like, that's what people are expected to do. You go to college, you get married, you have kids, you retire, and everything's happily ever after. So, back to the story here about Mr. Finman, because he's breaking out of this mold. He, at age 15, I don't even know if he if he's going to government school at this point. He certainly sounded like he was disappointed with it, if he is. He says he typically pays his employees, this is again the 15-year-old boss of Botangle.com, pays his employees in Bitcoin. He says, I'm sharing the wealth of Bitcoin because I have no doubt it'll be huge, huger, he says, than anyone can imagine <laughs> right now. Bitcoin is like the internet in the 90s. That's true. It's just waiting for the yeah. right moment to take off. But employees can choose what they want to charge for their lessons by the hour. Again, the site is about hooking up students with people who are willing to teach them. So, like, you know, you can have a French class that's actually instructed by someone in Paris, uh, for instance. So, And that's that's the one thing that I was not able to find that I was actually looking for on the site mm-hmm. is to determine what the rates were, if there were set rates, if it was all volunteer, if the instructors got to set the rates. They set. They choose what I they want. And I could not find that. I clicked the link because I went to the sign-up form to you know go through the process of being an expert. Mm-hmm. I never filled it out. But down at the bottom, there was a box for I have read the terms of use and privacy policy. I clicked on it, and it went to a 404 error. Oh, no. It is a beta site, so... I it guess. is beta, so I couldn't actually read the terms yeah. of use and the privacy <laughs> policy it to find anyway. out, you know, what sort of commission he gets, you know, because I am I've genuinely right curious here. about this. This information happens to be in the next paragraph uh, in the story, but in the case of uh, the broken website, I'm sure they'd appreciate you if you send them a, an email. To let yeah, they do that. have a thing for bug reports, so I'll, I'll do that later. Employees can choose what they want to charge for their lessons by the hour or by the minute. Finman currently earns 30% of that, but says he'll be dropping his take to 15% of a royalty or 15% royalty in the Botangle 2.0 update. Finman may be young, but he's had teaching and technology on the brain for years. In fact, he started teaching older kids in his neighborhood about robotics when he was nine. He's been continuing his education through his own site as well, taking advantage of programming courses to complement the classes he's enrolled in at his local community college. He says, I plan to talk to them about providing an online learning system for their college. Although he's clearly passionate about bringing education to more people through the Internet, he doesn't have plans to get a college degree of his own. 
the higher the higher schooler most recently switched to homeschooling to focus on Bo Tangle. Good for him. And he says, I actually have a deal with my parents that if I make a million dollars before I turn 18, I don't have to go to college. I'm going to do it or die trying. Well, that's great for him. But, I mean, it's it's great that he's trying to further his education, even if he's not going to college. But still, um, like, is the, are these classes a viable option for people who want to get something similar to a degree? I mean, is it accredited? Or no, it's, or not, is it just, it's not accredited. It's just and for learning. To become accredited, there are so many hoops and mm-hmm. hurdles that you have to jump through. You have to bend down and suck on the almighty teat of the government and say, what do you want me to do, master? <laughs> and then they tell you how you have to teach your classes and all kinds of other things. Mm. And I actually, I've spoken with a teacher who is on one of these accreditation boards, and she told me that the entire thing is a scam. And she's on a board (laughs) that does accreditations. Well, I mean, it does kind of seem like uh, most college degrees are really just there to show that like, you have the commitment to stick to college for so many years. What is that even worth? I mean, the, okay, you've managed to say stay sober enough to get through college for four years. Congratulations. <laughs> Here's a piece of paper. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. More on the way here. You can take control of the airwaves. The uh, Silk Road update still to come. This is Free Talk Live. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's the number brought to you by ProXPN. And with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Don't forget, you can go to freedomsphoenix.com every day to get the uncovered secrets and exposed lies at freedomsphoenix.com. The detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com. They've got up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. Get their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. So we've talked about the entrepreneur here, this 15-year-old who started his own business after having made it with the Bitcoin world. Now, he's doing the kind of legit business idea where he's able to advertise openly and he's not selling illegal drugs which is one of the other things that some people have done entrepreneurially online with Bitcoin. They've set up these websites like the Silk Road. The Silk Road was the first and most notable of these sites, or the first most notable, notable site. There may have been some sort of predecessor to the Silk Road, but it didn't, didn't make the same splash. Silk Road uh, was a way for people to buy and sell drugs and other products and services online. There were only a certain few categories that were prohibited from sale. I don't on think Silk there Road. were too many services that were actually offered just because of the nature of how things were being delivered. I think it was more goods. There was like the service of you could turn Bitcoin into cash or whatever, that kind of service. I'd still or consider that Bitcoin. to be a good good true true that is being sold fair enough well when i think of service i think you know plumbing oil change yeah you couldn't uh, get those you know, and when people think of black market services of course prostitution, prostitution. yeah you don't do but that you can't road. really mail a prostitute or you can could, you but it wouldn't be very no pretty. You're, you're not allowed to ship humans well, not if, live if humans they anyway well they may not be live by the time the you're allowed to well, ship you would yourself. Ha- you would have to poke holes in the box to keep them alive and yeah. notify them that it's a living being. I and mean, what if they're voluntarily If you're shipping a dog though. or a cat or a bird, then they have to be in a crate where you can actually see. Gotcha. Or, or, you know, you could just drive a car there. I mean, that that's also an option. So, no, prostitutes not on the list of options at uh, Silk Road. But it is interesting to look into what happened with the Silk Road and uh, what has happened since the Silk Road was raided. The uh, The site was taken down in October of last year. If you've uh, listened to Free Talk Live for a while, you know the story. Ross Ulbricht is the man they're targeting and accusing him of being the operator of the Silk Road. The operator was known publicly as Dread Pirate Roberts. Nobody knew anything else about him or her. Now, the feds are saying it was this guy, Ross Ulbricht. He has not yet been proven to be the Dread Pirate Roberts in a court. He's been sitting in prison waiting for his day in court. You can go to freeross.org to help him out. Actually, his family needs help raising money for the uh, the defense attorneys that they're, they're the defense attorney they're paying, who is a, like a Guantanamo Bay expert kind of defense attorney. This guy apparently is fairly, you know, noteworthy. And so uh, there was a situation where the feds had seized Bitcoin, a whole lot of Bitcoin, from both Ross and the website. 144,000 Bitcoin from Ross, 29,656.5130652 Bitcoin (laughs) 
from the Silk Road. That was 29,000 something bitcoins at what around 600 a bitcoin. That's uh that's you know that's that's not a small They're calling it 18 million dollars yeah. worth of bitcoin so, roughly. It is questionable that this man was actually the uh, Dread Pirate Roberts, but I mean maybe he was targeted specifically because he owned so many bitcoin. I mean, if you have control of a decent chunk of Bitcoin like that, you can actually have an effect on like the market price. Right. It'll be interesting to find out what the story is, what the defense has to say uh, for Ross, because obviously a lot of that is under wraps at the moment. But apparently the feds are looking to auction some of that Bitcoin off. Yes. The 29,656, we'll call it 0.5 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Marshals made an announcement yesterday and... After the announcement, the price of Bitcoin has gone down, Mm -hmm. and there's speculation that the price is going to continue going down until the auction just to lower the amount of money that the feds get from the auction. Oh, so this is in response to the feds selling it and not... uh, Right. Okay. That makes sense. I'm just surprised that they're actually auctioning them off because usually, like, if there's a crime scene and and they collect evidence, like, the police will hang on to that. They're Mm -hmm. not going to auction. Like, if if the policemen go and, like, raid some drug lord's house and they find, like, $100,000 in cash, they're not going to auction that off. Well, obviously not, but they want to turn the Bitcoin into cash. Right. Because they don't understand Bitcoin, likely, and they don't see any value in, in holding on to it. That would be my guess. Now, the idea that the market is somehow on its own volition setting the price lower in anticipation of the federal sale seems pretty speculative speculative to it, me. It's definitely speculation, but it's speculation it's that interesting. I have seen from several different people. Huh. And now, when is the it auction sounds expect- plausible. The is auction date? is June 27th okay. from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., and if one wishes to be a bidder, hmm. they can start registering as a bidder on Monday at 9 o'clock in the morning. I have no interest in being a bidder. Well, it also requires that you put in a refundable deposit of $200,000. Whoa! That's basically wow. so that they know so they that know if you're you'll pay yeah. for oh, so what want, you're bidding. So they want to auction it all at once is what you're saying. What they're, they're doing gonna... is they're going to have nine blocks of 3,000. Okay. So the they're chunks. they're trying to make it you know chunks of 3,000. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other chunk is 2,656.5133 yeah. something something. See, this is just like... It's really irritating to me that they're using Bitcoin against the people who use it. Like Bitcoin is made specifically to be used anonymously and like it's it's a nonviolent it doesn't go towards like funding aggression, but since they've taken this Bitcoin and now they're like getting funds out of it, it it's being used to their advantage. And right. like that just goes against the entire purpose of using it. Well, Bitcoin uh, certainly could be argued had the purpose of undermining the state. There's no doubt about it. But there's no reason why the state can't uh, they can't use Bitcoin. They can't embrace it, accept it, trade in it. They're just, you know, obviously reticent to change being the state. I mean, that's right there in their the, the name of them, the state. They don't change. Right. <laughs> so, um, and- I I would not bid on this if I had the money to bid on it uh, because I would feel dirty. I would feel bad yeah. accepting Bitcoin, even if you got a real great price on it. It would feel bad to me. Well, what I'm hoping, and I don't know if anybody plans to do this, but what I'm hoping is that some people that are supportive of Ross wind up winning these auctions and holding the Bitcoin until he gets out and then Mm. returning the Bitcoin to him. Or hopefully... presumes he was the Dread Pirate Roberts. Right. Well... You know, they were taken from him or from his from the control. Website. The ones they're auctioning were the ones that were taken from the website, correct? Right. The Not website that they personal. say that he had control of. So, right. you know, they haven't he, he certainly, you know, allegedly had control of. Who's going to swallow that much cost, though? That's a lot of it's money. a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting. I wonder if they're going to keep the bidders anonymous as well. And I don't know, but they, there's you know an article here from USA Today that I definitely want to get into. Okay, we can share more on this here in moments. Also, there's a study that says the Silk Road has reduced drug trade violence. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. We've got time for you with your thoughts on the Silk Road, the dark web, or whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. 
Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Take control of the airwaves by dialing toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. And please enjoy the features that we share with you. There archives that go back for years, all free at freetalklive.com. Coming up July 19th and 20th, we're not quite five weeks, just about five weeks out from that. Uh, it's the North American Bitcoin Conference happening in Chicago this time at the McCormick Place South Building. Speakers are going to be all over the map from the Liberty community, including Kathy Reisenwitz, as well as Roger Veer and Jeff Berwick, the Dollar Vigilante, 
uh, as well as others from the, plus Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me, plus people from the Bitcoin community. Of course, there's a huge level of crossover between both of those worlds, as you probably know. Uh, folks like Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Charlie Lee, uh, the creator of Litecoin, Trace Meyer of the Armory Wallet, Jeff uh, and J- Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, and more. Go to btcchicago.com. This is apparently the first ever Bitcoin conference to take place in the Midwest. This is your opportunity to come meet the movers and the shakers in the business, whether you're brand new to Bitcoin or you are an, uh, you know, an old fan of it and a longtime investor. This is, this is going to be the place to be, the North American Bitcoin Conference in Chicago, July 19th and 20th. Free Talk Live will be there broadcasting live in person, so we look forward to seeing you. BTCChicago.com. You can, of course, pay in Bitcoin at BTC chicago.com we're talking silk road and we're going to get back on that here in a moment we've got nathan first in texas on skype nathan you're on the air hi guys hey uh i don't know if rich paul is still listening but i wanted to know he's in jail (laughs) oh right sorry well i don't know today it could uh, be possible if someone would put an fm transmitter on the air in the vicinity of the jail if he then had an FM receiver, which you can get in jail here in Cheshire County, you have to pay quite a bit for one. But Most jails allow you to purchase radios from commissary. At quite an inflated price. This one yes. is like $40 for the crappiest Sony. Oh, yeah, for one that you would get for 5 bucks at Dollar General. If that, yeah. Well, and we can't have prisoners listening to the FM radio while they're in jail. Well, most of them have them. Like, they're fairly common. Like, people are willing to pay the money to, to have that entertainment while they're in there. So, yeah, if you could get an FM transmitter on the air nearby the jail that could penetrate into the walls of the facility, then everybody in the jail could listen to Free Talk Live, which I think is a fine idea. You should uh, move well, here and do a, that. that. That's an enterprising opportunity for yeah, some Yeah, uh, well, you won't make any money at it, but it's an so, opportunity. So what surprised me, uh, I guess uh, the, when, I, when I did the research about um, – you know the right to the duty protect duty to protect and the obligation to to obey i was surprised how often the courts just straight up said nope there's no obligation to protect you what and, did we tell you over and <laughs> over again they have made that ruling yep. it's very consistent and, he, and with the jury nullification thing i was also somewhat surprised because i thought it would go the other way that it seemed like they would just disallow it right away and it would be incontrovertible that it would not be allowed but not only does it have that not only does it have this long tradition in in British and English common law but there's actually this uh, fourth circuit decision i looked up here from 1969 called US v Moylan where the judges in effect said yep jury nullification is okay they say quote we recognize as appellants as appellants urge the undisputed power of the jury to acquit even if its verdict is contrary to the law as given by the judge and contrary to the evidence. Well, by definition, wouldn't they have to, uh, you know, accept jury nullification? Like, that would kind of defeat the purpose of having juries if they said that, you know, jury nullification was not uh, an acceptable rule. Well, I think what's uh, not being really said here in the two cases I've looked up, like there's another case here in uh, the D.C. Court of Appeals, I think the kind of unspoken thing is that the jurors can't be punished for the verdict that they return. And in fact, I'm looking at a Fox News article, too, that talks about William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania. Apparently, jury nullification was first used in his case where he was accused of, you know, worshiping the wrong religion. Uh, I guess as a Quaker in England, that wasn't approved of. Mm -hmm. And uh, at his trial, it says here that the judge... uh, threw the jurors in, in to, under uh, shackles when they refused to convict him of, you know, worshiping a different religion. So I guess for jury nullification to really make sense, that would have to really be the crux of it, that jurors, they can return whatever verdict they want and, the, you know, they can't punish them. Right. Uh, in, in the United States, there is no criminal liability for a jury returning a quote-unquote wrong verdict, but I have seen video and heard stories of judges verbally berating jurors for returning what the judge thought was a wrong verdict. Mm. And uh, we've definitely seen judges give wrong jury instructions and misleading jury instructions with the intention of intimidating jurors into not believing that they have the right to nullify. Right. Well, that might have its origin in these cases, too, because because they also in the same paragraph basically say 
that you know the judge is not you know the judge has no legal obligation to explain it and i think there might even be one of these cases uh where they actually said you can actually just disallow its mention completely so uh, they seem to be ha taking the stance that it's okay because we can't really we don't really want to lock jurors in jail but you know uh don't talk about it <laughs> oh yeah it's definitely off the table in most jurisdictions for discussion that is not an option they want to do everything they can to keep jury nullification information out of people's hands in most places in orlando uh the made the main guy out there who was promoting the fully informed jury association julian heichlin was arrested for distributing jury flyers outside of the courthouse as was mark schmitter who is a guy in his early 60s who was also arrested both of these guys were put in jail for an, a number of months uh, where they sat. And what were they convicted for? Uh, jury tampering, I think, was They, they were the charged charges. with jury tampering. Contempt I don't remember if they were well. actually convicted of jury tampering. Uh, Schmitter was in jail for like six months, I think. And uh, I know that I think it was Heiklin who managed to kind of, kind of get out on bail somehow. And then he skipped the country. He went to Israel, I think. Uh, I was going to say, isn't contempt a, a kind of catch-all for when they don't have anything else? Yes. yes. Contempt is a charge where it doesn't even actually exist in legislation. It wasn't created by the, the state it, it's representatives. A it's a common law power. power of the court. Yeah, it's, it's an inherent power of the court, which basically means there's no check and balance on it whatsoever, uh, that the court judges can just wave their magic wand and cast contempt on you, and basically <laughs> there's nothing that you can do about it except go sit time in a prison cell. And there's different types of contempt. There's uh, direct contempt, indirect contempt, and I think there's like criminal and there may be a civil contempt. I don't know all the – all like four or whatever different types but the basic difference between direct and indirect contempt as i understand it and please correct me if you think i'm wrong on this is that uh, direct contempt is something that happens within the judge's sight if you're in the courtroom and the man in the robe is there and you do something that he tells you not to do or you do something he then tells you not to do it again and you do it again he'll hit you with a direct uh contempt charge and i think it's direct criminal contempt and if you are not in the courtroom if the judge orders you to do something Maybe it's pay a fine. Maybe it's you know stay away from somebody. Maybe it's whatever it is that the judge has ordered. Uh, bail conditions, for instance. Anytime you violate a judge's order outside of the purview of the judge's immediate vicinity, and oh, or if the indirect. judge writes an order, not directed to you, but just writes a general order. That's true. Applying that to the you don't know about, and you violate that, well, then ignorance of the law you are is guilty no of contempt. What was that, Ellen? Ignorance of the law is no excuse, so they say. So they say, and it's a convenient thing for them to say to uh, have the excuse to arrest you and put you in a cage. So that's kind of the difference between direct and indirect contempt. Uh, anything else you want to share tonight, Nathan? Uh, just that I'm curious if you're, you know, just hypothetically, if you're in that jury room and you explain to the other jurors, just in a you know, typical case, yes, there's this case, yes, nullification exists, yes, you can't be punished for it. I wonder what proportion of juries or jurors would actually, you know, be affected by that and believe you as opposed to the ones who would either not believe you or convict anyway, just because... That, you know, the person is a bad person. Well, I'm uh, sure they would believe you. Like, that's just it's, some it's quite believable, but I, I think when people go into, uh, like, if, if you're called in for jury duty, I think you go in with the mindset that, like, okay, I've got to do the right thing here. And some people don't know exactly what that is. Well, to them, to a lot of people, the right thing is to do whatever they're told by the men in the suits. And a lot of people would say that that's just some conspiracy theory stuff that, oh, well, that may have happened once in the past, but not anymore. Hey, thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Also, with uh, the folks over at the Fully Informed Jury Association, they're very wary of using the term nullification and getting explicit when you're on the inside of a jury. So you got to be careful with that in a lot of places. We're coming up. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 
10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Following earlier reports of 27-year-old Mark Felder's profound and startling level of pride in his alma mater, the University of Miami alumnus spoke to Onion reporters about his strong affection for the academic institution that left him totally unprepared for the job market and floundering in $50,000 of debt. I would not trade my time at the University of Miami for anything. Miami has the best college experience in the country, hands down. I had an awesome time there, and it's an amazing place. We've got awesome bars, awesome sports, an awesome campus, and we're pretty much right next to the beach. I mean, what more could you want? You have to be crazy not to go there. Felder, who paid over $140,000 in tuition, told reporters he takes an annual trip to see a Hurricanes football game and visit the university that failed to teach him any marketable job skills whatsoever, leaving him so financially helpless he was forced to move back in with his parents after graduating. Am I, am I, fight, fight, fight! Yeah, it's all about the U, baby! All about the U! That's what I'm talking about! Go Canes, baby! For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control here toll free. We invite you to bring up anything that you want. We've been talking about... The amazing world of Bitcoin, which spans, it's quite a world, it spans all the way from the, the, the realm of the entrepreneurial, open, uh, kind of public website to accepting Bitcoin, to the merchants in physical reality accepting Bitcoin for their products and services, as well as the dark web, as it is called, the, dun, dun, dun. the underground, and uh, the Silk Road and other websites like it that have been accepting Bitcoin, where sellers are selling drugs and, and uh, fake IDs and other interesting things that are normally kind of hard to acquire yes. or risky to acquire. And in fact, there's another story that we're probably not going to have time to get to tonight, about how the Silk Road, there's a study that claims that the Silk Road has actually reduced drug trade violence because it's safer to buy from an anonymous person online than to buy from a shifty person in a back alley or in a parking lot somewhere. 
Oh, yes. that's certainly true. Yeah. So it's uh, unfortunate that most of the things sold on the black market are the most fun. <laughs> that's just life. <laughs> uh, Expresscoin.com is where you can go now to get your bitcoins. For cash. It used to be cash into coins. You remember them. Now they're expresscoin.com. In fact, you can get bitcoins or dogecoin from expresscoin.com. More easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. Expresscoin is still priding themselves on their customer service. It's still the same great team that you might have been used to from cash into coins. If you ever needed customer service, you got to know them. Uh, you can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. Start off at expresscoin.com and get it done. In fact, you can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app at Expresscoin. Dot com. So, Daryl, we were talking about the Silk Road and the approximately 17 plus 18 million dollars worth of Bitcoin that the feds uh, seized from the Silk Road, this underground yes. website. And they're now getting ready to auction that money away. Yes. And USA Today, I guess because a lot of people aren't familiar with Bitcoin, they do what I am calling sort of an elementary school description of bitcoin okay and i'm guessing that you know people that listen to this show unless they listen all the time they might not be familiar with bitcoin either so i i'm just going to read usa today's description of bitcoin bitcoins are an unregulated online currency that are not backed by gold silver or any other commodity oh my goodness that sounds terrible it does sound dangerous doesn't it well the u.s dollar isn't backed by gold silver or any other commodity yeah. but the u.s but dollar unless, is regulated unless you count the quote-unquote full faith and credit and United States military as being a thing of value backing the u.s dollar well, there are people who do Consider it that. I don't. Because they, being Bitcoins, do not generally exist in the real world. What is actually being auctioned are sets of numbers that have been entered into an online public ledger. The sale will take place June 27th. That makes it sound so simple, like much more simple than it actually is. Sets of numbers? It's just sets of numbers that have been entered into a public ledger. Well, that's hardly an explanation. I feel like they should at least give uh, Bitcoin a little bit more credit. I mean, like tell people what it's actually worth or explain. Well, it does say that the auction of roughly $18 million worth of virtual money. For cold, hard cash is taking place later this month. True, but then that would require someone to do the division, right? To actually find out what a Bitcoin's worth? Right. Yeah. And How many USA Today readers are going to do that? says that federal agents arrested Albrick on October 1st in the science fiction section of the Glen Park branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Yeah, they claim he was logged into the site. He was charged with drug trafficking, money laundering, and computer hacking is being held without bail in New York. And the one charge that the feds have not charged him with, that they alleged when they picked him up, apparently he is being charged in Maryland for the supposed murder for hire. They did bring those charges finally? Because I don't think it's the federal government. It says he is charged separately in Maryland in connection with a murder for hire plot. Oh, man. I was hoping that they wouldn't charge him with that. That's unfortunate because for a little while it looked like they were only going to charge him with the money laundering and drug dealing and those things, computer hacking. So based on my reading of this and knowing some of the facts of what's happening, it seems as though that is not a federal charge, that it's Hmm. a state-level charge in Maryland. Interesting. I wonder if that was where the alleged target was supposed to be. I don't know. It doesn't say. Yeah. Huh. Well, by the way, uh, it's worth noting that Porcupine Freedom Festival will be featuring Ross Ulbricht's mother, Lynn. Yes. She's going to be one of the key, no, I don't know if it's keynote, but she's going to be one of the key speakers that will be speaking at Porkfest. At least one of the ones I'm interested in seeing. Uh, I had the chance to meet her at the Austin, uh, the Texas Bitcoin conference that happened earlier this year. Really nice lady. Unfortunately, she talked to me after we'd already booked some guests for the show, and I, I just wasn't able to, to work her in. I didn't want to boot somebody else off just to, to put her on. So it'll be great to actually have an opportunity to have her in person 
talking about what's going on with her son and get the kind of the inside scoop of what's been happening with the case recently because I haven't heard very much recently. I don't know about right. you. Right. And is she going to be staying at Pork Fest for several days or do I you know, know when she's giving the speech? She's um, speaking on Saturday, I believe. Okay, so odds are good. She'll probably be there for a day or two, but I don't expect you're going to see her much more than that. Well, as long as I get to hear at least some of what she has to say. And of course, uh, you can go to freeross.org to contribute to her and the family and helping Ross get through this thing. Because maybe he wasn't Dread Pirate Roberts. Right. Maybe he's a, a patsy. You know, yeah. maybe maybe Dread Pirate Roberts. Maybe he was working with Dread Pirate Roberts. Maybe he did have some role in the site, but he wasn't actually the the head man. Or maybe he was essentially the front man for the head man. Who knows what the real story is behind the Silk Road? And the article does mention that there is. Still a dispute over roughly 144,000 bitcoins that were owned supposedly by Ross Ulbrich. And another story that I read said that he is claiming in court papers that those bitcoin are not subject to civil asset forfeiture rules. That's correct. And I haven't heard an update on that case. His attorney did file a motion on that, and it feels like it's been a couple months now since that motion, maybe even three months since that motion was filed. So and then there was also, I believe, a motion to say that the money laundering charge should be dropped since the IRS is saying that Bitcoin isn't money. It's property. It's so property. Is it possible that he could hang on to his Bitcoin then? I don't know how likely, but it's possible. I mean, that would be pretty great for him if he can you know, get out of jail at some point and, and still have, have Bitcoin. Of I think yes. that's... I think that's why the U.S. Marshals are not auctioning off the 144,000 yeah. is because there is the dispute over whether or not, right, he's not those yet are able to be seized. If he wasn't the Dread Pirate Roberts, then he was just somebody who happened to have a lot of Bitcoin. And right. for you know, how he got those, maybe he spent $50 five years ago and bought some Bitcoin and now it's worth $50 million or $80 million or however much. He's got, I don't remember, was it 144000 or something like 144, that? 144000 Right. So it would be difficult to prove how he got those, but still, it does look suspicious to people when you have hundreds of Bitcoin and you know, you're somehow associated with uh, the Silk Road. If, his, uh, if the story of the feds is to be believed, and their story is they found him in the library, right, he was on the Silk Road, logged into what they call the Mastermind account. It's all coincidental, but still... I I feel like they could just use these random instances that like kind of line up coincidentally to convict him like even if it's not solid proof. They certainly can. That's yeah. uh, the purview of the federal government. They have they have their ways. And when the Silk Road was taken down, there were nearly 1 million customers. The site yeah, had wow. done 1.2 billion dollars in sales. Two years. That's how and long that took. And Ulbrich was alleged to have collected commissions worth roughly 80 million dollars. Not too shabby. But he was living in an apartment with other people. Yes. I mean, why? Why would you do that? I mean, if you gotta stay low on the radar. Uh, that's an argument. You There's... don't stay rich by spending all your money. That's an argument, but I'm sorry, it doesn't cost you that much money to have your own place where you don't have a bunch of people nosing around in your business right. who might find something out about you or ask questions about why you don't go to work. But or this whatever. is like the same mistake that drug dealers make. Like maybe you live in a really terrible apartment complex, but you have like this super nice forty thousand dollar car. Sure. It's like the IRS is gonna come snooping around at some point. Like, where's all this funding coming from? Yeah, but the IRS from? won't come snooping around if you're renting a house. They don't know you're renting a house. They don't know where you're renting a house. I mean, you can go and get a house, no problem, and have a little bit of space between you and, and your neighbors. It's just, it doesn't add up. Have if you ever been to San Francisco? Dollars, there are no houses where there's any space. Good You point. don't have space. Okay. Like the Touché. only The only spots in San Francisco where you have space... Are not in San Francisco. You could at the very least rent the entire townhouse in which you live and not have roommates living with you. True. If you've got $80 million, it's not a big deal to spend an extra $1,000 a month on a on a place in San Francisco. All right, out of time for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, check out Ellen at ALPshow.com, Daryl at FPP.cc, and we'll see you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. Today. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you?
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.56 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,273 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $613. USA Today reports the federal government plans to auction roughly $18 million worth of Bitcoin later this month. The 29,656.513 Bitcoins to be auctioned were seized from the Silk Road last fall. The anonymous website was a major sales point online for illegal drugs and other underground goods. The U.S. Marshals Service posted an announcement of the auction on their website yesterday. The sale will take place June 27th. The Bitcoins are to be auctioned off in blocks of 3,000, each worth roughly $1.8 million. 